<clears throat> and we're back. We're back. Here back. at the cozy show <laughs> in the cozy corner with uh, my co-host. Chris Mariscal. And a very two-time special guest. Coach Garcia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our coach right here uh, from our high school running days. Um, I don't even know how to intro this in a sense because it's a little strange. We had you on <clears throat> previously, maybe a little over a year ago. Uh, we had a normal full episode and some things happened. So we took it down <laughs> uh, recently. And But you wanted to come back. You uh, reach out and said, "Hey, I want to come back." And yeah, so you're you're on. So do you want to go right into it, or do you want to talk a little bit first? Well, it r- r- really doesn't matter. Yeah, so pretty much, uh, it, well, I can go into the thing of hey, taking it down. Um, I got surprised one <laughs> one morning. Um, Real um, quick, sorry, hold on. He was our high school running coach. It's been a long time since you're on, so I just want to say, yeah, he was our running coach back in high school. We ran cross country and track. It's a long distance running. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's had a really big impact on our lives. And, yeah, so we're having him back on because after our last pod, yeah, some things went down that he's going to describe right now. So, sorry. I wanted to give a little context. A little context. This, this yeah, so when, uh, how, wh- my question from what, 2014, 2015 to 2018? Yeah, 2015 to 2018, I believe. I think so, yeah. Three years. We started years. our sophomore <laughs> year and uh, you ended it. Well, we were done by 2018. Yeah, yeah. that's when and we graduated. You kept coaching for me another year or two, right? For you, are you older than Ryan Swallow? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, I think I was there for one more year, and then uh, yeah. I left to mm-hmm. Delhi. Okay, okay, so you're saying so you got surprised? Yeah, so yeah, well, so I decided to go coach uh, Escalon High. Um, so I got an opportunity to go coach over there to help out and um, be part of that team. So I decided to go back. Um, I had forgotten about the podcast that I did here. Yeah. So, like, uh, I, I told pe- people I wasn't expecting to go back to coaching, but my coaching experience was needed to help uh, help grow the team and help uh, uh, help the other coaches out. Uh, coach Quell was actually pulling me in to so, to so I could help him coach. So I was hesitant on doing it, but uh, the passion, my passion, is coaching. So I knew I knew I wasn't supposed to put it get back into it because of my business i was focused on my business but i decided to go uh go to where my wife was supportive because she knows that i'm more relaxed more happy when i'm <clears throat> coaching uh, so she, she was really supportive <laughs> so um i was getting uh, that morning i was getting ready for a league meet uh, uh i didn't work that day because i was gonna get ready when one of my athletes texted me about the the video so the video and, yeah he told me yeah. that it was going around like crazy everybody was watching it and I, but pretty much he advised me I actually took it down. So one of your students, right? Yeah, one of the yeah, well, ki- yeah, kids. Well, yeah, one of my athletes uh, told me about it that everybody was seeing it. Uh, his feedback was that the kids were just laughing about it. They, they found it funny. Which yeah. when I see you guys' podcast, yes, your you guys' podcasts are funny. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> but I was like, but he told me to take it to. Uh, he advised me to take it down. I'm like, okay. So I reached out to you guys that same morning to take it down. Um, but I couldn't remember what we talked about, so um, so I took it down right away too. Well, you took I it thought. down for YouTube. You forgot to take it down from other <laughs> <laughs> platforms, yeah. bitch. Sure. But I, I, I think I, the damage was done by yeah. then. Well, I don't think that was much much damage. Like what? Well, once I had a time to go back and hear it, it was what an hour and a half of just yeah, or maybe like close to two hours. Yeah, so yeah. I went back to hearing it to see what was so damaging. Yeah, that it was going like crazy, and there was nothing that that we talked about so i I was surprised um because i didn't want to worry about it uh i told you guys to take it down i went to to the school got things ready for the track meet uh i forgot what school we were uh, going against but then i got approached by administration asking me about the video that parents were emailing the principal emailing the superintendent about it um it it got crazy but i told him hey like the pretty much i i remember talking about some stuff i talked about the science behind it i talked about my personal experience but i told him like that if the principal wanted to hear it i, I could get that audio so everybody can hear it uh but from there uh we just said okay well, let's talk about it later the, the next day so we can get them with the track me track me went great the varsity girls won uh the guys it was a close uh, match i believe nice um and then the next uh so i started getting things ready for the next day but the next day you can say it was 24 hours or a little bit over when uh, I, st- 
I was going back to practice the next day to uh, after the track meet, and I was gonna. Um, yeah, I was driving there. I had an appointment with the uh, uh, administration, the principal, and the uh, AD to talk uh, things over. But the superintendent was there, so the decision had already been made to uh, relieve me from the position. Fine. So, which it, it, it was a quick, quick That's notice. A quick yeah, no, like no, two days for the whole. Well, not not even two days. Thing? It was like a one day. Uh, situation so i started thinking i'm not sure if the video had been running around before that before <laughs> i got told yeah but from the time i found out uh, about the video or got told about it that kids were watching it, it even the kids like during practice during the race or anything I, I didn't see no difference from the kids no 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 comments no nothing nothing that would show that it was affecting their um their ability to be coached by me or uh, me influencing them in the wrong in a different way so yeah. it, it was surprising that everything was smooth everything was perfect but uh seems that uh the superintendent uh had just decided to uh please the the people that didn't want me there so to go from there from the beginning uh when i started coaching there i got told that getting to escalon a district was gonna be hard because the like, i i don't want to say that there's uh, discrimination there because I, I got treated real good like i i, I felt welcomed by by some uh by some parents by some staff members and stuff like that but there was some people that didn't want me there and to start off with what uh there's a coach uh coach uh rosie that like she from the beginning do you want us to keep that in no no bleep, yeah, bleep yeah, you can keep that in so okay yeah there's a this coach like she like so when i got hired i got the option to to choose my own coaches to bring them in but my philosophy is why change something that is already working so i decided to keep the coaches on staff no reason to make a big change uh, besides me um so i decided to keep everybody on staff to to make how was the program there like when you came in did, so, did you think they had a decent program like coaching no wise? so the, the reason i i i got brought in and who was got brought in so a little bit background on me um i coached four years for enox i got my bachelor's degree in sports medicine athletic training I'm certified, uh, I've been certified for about 10 years through the National Association of Sports Medicine as a personal trainer. I got multiple cer certifications under me uh, uh, for sports for sports performance, a bunch of other stuff. I, I was a member of the USA Track and Field uh, organization. And so my background on the field was my resume to be in the position or any, any high school level is over and beyond. Yeah. So when they brought me in, they brought me in because Cuevas recommended me. Cuevas has way more experience over 20, 30 years. And Cuevas so, was his coach yeah. when he Cuevas, was an yeah, athlete. Cuevas was my coach. He he helped me run a 432 mile, a 929 two mile, a 1452 uh, 5K, and a 3129 10K. So th this guy knows what he, what he's doing. And unfortunately, uh, they're trying to go after him too. Really? Yeah. So. For this? Yeah, well, not for other stuff. So oh. they're trying to find any little thing to get him fired as well. So we did <coughs> talk about him like a little bit on the last pod. Yeah. So, so. but nothing crazy. Maybe no. just like how oh, he's a little bit more hardcore. But yeah, maybe so. than like the typical coach. But yeah, the, the same thing. Effective. Like, you know? Well, like when he came over to coach, I, I thought he was gonna be coaching the same way that he used to coach me. Mm. But he went a little bit easier. Mm. He, he was coaching his uh his runs, his training. Uh, his training and everything else was much easier, which one of the reasons that uh, like this coach Rosie is trying to get him fired is because supposedly he's overtraining the athletes and they're getting injured. And he's going easier now. Yeah, he's going way easier compared Jesus. to uh, what uh, he made me do and what I made you guys do. Yeah. Like, like yeah, so way easier. Uh, but when I was coaching, when uh, I went, so because these athletes were getting injured. So when I was able to go run with them, I went to go run with the fast guys, with the mid mid group, and the slower guys to see what what they were doing. This uh, the athletes were running in sidewalks and cement mm -hmm. or asphalt, so that's why they were getting injured. Not yeah. because they were they're being overtrained, it's because they're not running the correct uh, surface surface. So they're supposed to be running on dirt. You guys remember dirt? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that, that's what's happening. So, but this coach is just trying to find any little reason to to get him fired as well so she she achieved it with me with this but uh, i'm gonna call it bogus video mm -hmm. um but she had it after me since the beginning she started she got some other athletes plus another other coaches to gather athletes to uh write letters to the superintendent to get me 
relieved and gave the previous coach that had been coaching there uh, running the program before. Mm. So this letter from the beginning. Yeah. Just didn't want me there. And I'm not sure if it's a racist aspect or just a community thing, but me and Cuevas are the only Hispanic coaches in there. Yeah. So. Um, and Escalon is like a pretty small yes. country kind of and, white and, people. Yeah, town. and that's the thing that I was telling people. Like, I loved it. Like, I like the community. It's like outside in the country. It's not, it's not close. Uh, I told some people that. I was like, hey, like, I, I like the school. I, I, I was uh, making or telling my wife that I was making plans to. Uh, get a ranch over there have my kids go to that mm, to, yeah. to that school yeah. and stuff like that but well they didn't want me there so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well fact. what can you do man it's just yeah good. Like, and that's pretty much when, when i saw that the multiple hits i'm like man i i'm not here to beg beg or bug anybody i know what i'm worth i know my qualifications yeah if they're gonna give me the opportunity they will if they're not they won't so but the program wasn't doing that good that's that's why we got brought in uh, the, the yeah. team was getting uh i think Last place is like into last place in the last two three years, yeah. so, so um, yeah. So that that was situation. Do you know uh, what division they are? Is it like D three, D five? Oh shit! Yeah, they're small, small. and they're still doing bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, but and pretty much that's the only program that's doing bad in Escalon. Mm. Every other sport is killing it. Oh yeah. So er, that that's what I liked about that the that school, that administration, the principal, the AD. They're running a great program, mm. like mm-hmm. athletic sports wise. They're bo- the, the principal is a, a, back, a sports background, the AD. He's the football coach, and he's been winning championships left and right. Yeah. So they wanted to bring somebody with the desire to help the athletes get to the next level. So so I loved it. When, when I got that interview, they told me their background. I was like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm yeah. down to help you guys out. Uh, but we got into the resistance of some of the coaches, some of the people that have been there uh, not wanted wanted people from the outside to come in they they wanted in-house people mm-hmm. which under my books under the california law does discrimination yeah mm-hmm. so but when i got told about the situation that letters were being written behind my back all that kind of stuff i was like you know what i, I just washed it off i was like okay i'm new let me show these coaches that i mean well yeah and win them over so i spent the next month two months trying to do that show them like, hey I, i'm no threat i'm here to help i'm here to make a difference and I do believe I, I won some of the other coaches over. They they, they understood that I, I meant well. But this uh, Coach Rosie just, Damn. yeah, she, she just had it after me. She was, be, yeah, she, she, she was being fake in my face and trying to get other parents to to, to talk to the district to get me get me fired. So Damn. I came to the conclusion that probably she was the one that just spread the whole video around. Yeah. So, cause as soon she probably I, looked you up like Alejandra Garcia and then – you know, yeah, probably the podcast came up. She's, you know, she's yeah, probably looking for any kind yeah, of. Like, like, we talked about it. It's weird that they found the podcast because you, you guys are growing barely, mm-hmm. which is weird to just randomly like, oh, look, <laughs> this specific barely, yeah. number 44 out of like, <laughs> I think you guys were at 90 maybe. Yeah, yeah. it was out of nowhere. That was the thing. It was out yeah, of nowhere. I was like, what the yeah. hell? Was so you guys barely get into the hundreds. And when <laughs> all that stuff happens, I'm like, this is just, it looks like a hit. So it, yeah. it looked like a straight hit. So. But damn, what yeah. do you think it was? Like, why she didn't like you? Do you think it's like a racial thing, or do you think um, your coaching methods or how did your coaching have your did your coaching method methods change so, since you uh, coached us? So in, no, no. So in the beginning, <laughs> we <laughs> no. I, I I believe in the old school style. Uh, it's helped a lot of other outside uh, other countries and top uh, distance coaches here in the, in the states are using so. The coaching system is still the same, but when I got brought in, they the coaches told me that whatever I decided to do, they would support me. But when I gave them, I gave them an idea, or, or by the same time, I wanted to be us for agreeing on the coaching system or or the changes in the, in the team. But when I was trying to work with one coach, I got an objection with another coach. And when I was trying to fix that coach, I got an objection with another coach. Yeah. So, and then I, then I, Damn, I, I how was, many coaches do they have? I, what do they have four? I had three assistant coaches. Is so, it because it's track season? Yeah, it's track. Yeah. Okay. So throwing, sense. sprints, yeah. jumps, and Cuevas was helping me with uh, distance. You're not the head coach, though. You're just. No, I dis- was the head coach. Oh, shit. Really? So you're yeah. all of them. The whole yeah. track program? Yeah, I was oh, the head okay. coach. Damn. Run, Jeez. Running the whole program. So, yeah. So, Cuevas was the. Once he came, well, once he got better because of his uh, car accident, because oh, that's pretty much how I got pulled in. So, Kuwa was uh, with, with my background of running, <coughs> running the Inox program, the Delhi program, uh, helping him at uh, East Union, 
and I did one season at MJC. So he told me like he wanted me to come help run, uh, help him run the program. So I was like, okay. So I decided to to come help. So they were my assistant coaches. So I was trying to please them, work with them. At the same time, I was trying to meet administration's requirements mm-hmm. and then implement my my coaching system, my yeah. the, the way to make the uh, the program successful. When I started to see that, well, after I heard that the, they were doing things behind my back, and then I was seeing too much Roblox trying to please everybody, I just put a an end to it, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna. If there's any complaints, send 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 them my way. Send send the parents my way. Let me talk to them. Let them um, eliminate any miscommunication in the in the middle. Yeah. But I'm not sure in the in the beginning of the how. The first two weeks, it, it was a rocky start. Um, they, they, the coaches didn't like him because of that. But after I found out that what they were doing, pretty much I, I didn't got uh, no, it's called no anger against them, no, no was, grudge. I, I yeah. didn't have no grudges. So I was like, let, let me just earn the trust. I do believe I earned the trust of the other two assistant coaches. Um, but I just uh, this other coach who just wasn't giving it. Um, I honestly felt like I did. I did feel. I actually felt that the tension in some of the athletes in the beginning of the season. They were avoid me. They were kind of like, like you. You feel that elephant after, after coaching for so many years and me being a businessman. You yeah. you know that elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, even with her with her daughters that she had she had uh, she has two daughters there. Um, I, I will feel that that the difference. Yeah. E- even her husband will help uh, with uh, with the coaching throwing, and I think uh, Mel's. We we it's hard for us to be fake. So mm. we just, he just kind of like respectfully said hi. Listen up. I, I could see I could see the difference. But little by little, I started showing the athletes that I meant well. I wasn't the the person they were trying to make me uh, seem. And yeah, I got along same way with, that I got along with you guys. Uh, mm-hmm. Enoch, you're very, you're very upfront. So yes. No yeah, yeah, I'm really upfront. There's no bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I hate trying. There's a lot of problems with miscommunication if you're trying. If you're not upfront. So I like to be upfront, get to the point, and let's let's get moving. Let's get let's find a solution. But uh, towards the end of the season, the kids love me, and that's, that's one of the things that told me. The administration told me the more the kids like you, the more the, the coach is gonna hate you, mm-hmm. because I'm a threat. That I'm, I'm yeah. I'm taking over the athletes. I'm like, but that's what I was gonna say. Is I feel like it, like it has to be coming from a place of like insecurity, you know, from the, from this coach yeah. Rosie, like yeah, and, and that's pretty much where know. where I felt that. I think at one point. Like I, I, she, like I, I'm just gonna say I think she's a great person. She, uh, her job requires to to work with uh, special ed st- uh, students, as, as I understood. She has mm-hmm. a great family, great daughters. Uh, her, her daughter, uh, her senior daughter was uh, valedictorian. Maybe she she won an award for yeah. sports and stuff. She's her GPS up there. So my question to me, like, it mind blows me. Like, how can you be so negative and so? try to go after somebody when you have such a great family like such a great life yeah and stuff yeah she she's a great inf- uh, center of influence in that community because she's been there for forever most of those people are, uh, gr- went to escalon gr- gr- were raised there all that kind of stuff so for her to do what she was doing is like i yeah i, I learned after like i think i talked about in the la- last podcast since from when I got sick, I hit depression. I hit rock bottom. Mm-hmm. I thought about uh, suicide. When I come out of out of that, I tend not to waste my time with hard feelings. Yeah. I try to understand other people, but at this point, I, I'm dropping her name because I'm like, it's not fair that I gave you two, <laughs> three times, the two, three ter- uh, opportunities to get to know me, and you still had it, had it after me. Yeah, is yes, and, and that's why Adriana's like, like that. That's my style. Like if I give you the benefit of the doubt. A second benefit of the doubt, and then you still come after me. Like, nah, it's just you know what? It's just yeah. Did it's you ever just, confront her about it? Like, what's going on? Oh no, no it's just. But well, what's the point? It's just she, if mm-hmm. she sees the the, the podcast, like if, if it if it ran organically, the way that some people are gonna say, oh no, so, so the kids just saw it. The kids just find which I, I told Adriana. Some of those you know, uh, Escalon kids may be uh, connected to some of your classmates and Enox and all kind of stuff. So maybe that's mm-hmm. how it ran. Mm-hmm by organically but i'm like this is a little bit weird even even if somebody found organically uh she had to i'm gonna look up your name right now and see what comes up (laughs) yeah organically like like it had to be from googling somebody would have to seen it and and the way it was should have gone into one of her daughters for her to be able to see it 
But if she had my back at the end of the day as one of my assistant coaches and really wanted the best for me, she would have killed it there as a center of influence. But I'm like from what I got from uh, up top from the people that uh, supported me at Escalon, like that a lot of parents saw that video. So somebody was in charge of spreading the hell out yeah. of the video. Yeah, especially the parents, because it's like <coughs> the students aren't really going to be telling the parents, like, oh, look at this podcast. Oh, you well, know? Mm, well, no, like, I, I learned that Escalon athletes are great, smart athletes. So <laughs> they have great communication with their with their parents. Mm. And probably they did tell the parents, oh, I, I'm not eliminating the process that some of the uh, uh, students did. It. Here, there's a video of uh, Coach uh, Garcia talking about this. But when I watched the, the podcast, I was like, okay, like, when did I start talking about it? Like, we didn't talk about my experience with psychedelics during depression and the science behind it until, like, minute 45. Yeah. yeah. It was like somebody would have to be sitting there for 45 minutes <coughs> to get to the specific yeah. thing. It is it it was Comments ain't coming, but comments says, man, this, this was a hit. Did you get to see, <laughs> did you know exactly what the parents said they didn't like about you, that they were, like, uncomfortable with you? I yeah, mean, what was like, the did, reasoning? Did no, they like, say, like, oh, because he was on a pod and he, he said anything? Nope, I didn't get nothing. So It was just parents were emailing and that's so it. So, yeah, the parents, so the superintendent, the first time I got called in, uh, I already got a like, little advice, like, hey, like, people don't, are not used to getting new people in, in here. So uh, try to be as professional as you can and behave. Because I think um, what one time I got I, I got addressed that as a coach, as a head coach, in my background with my experience, uh, with one of my athletes is hurting, I need to figure out what's the problem. Uh, if uh, to to find out if she's just trying to get away from practice or she's actually injured, so I can give her <laughs> a something to do. Mm-hmm. So one of the athletes. Uh, Coach Rosie wasn't there. It was one of her athletes. She took the day off or something. She had something to do, so I was coaching her 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 group while my distance guys were doing something else. So this girl just decided to walk off. One one of her peer athletes told me about it, so I went to go check on her to make sure that she was fine. Mm-hmm. So she told me her stomach hurt. I was like, well, did, were you doing core? Like, were you doing this? Are you in your, in your menstrual cycle? Like, what's going on? So I know what advice to give as a professional. Yeah. Uh, so she just talked to me normally, this and that. But then the next day or two days later, I got called up uh, into the office with a complaint that the, I made that girl feel uncomfortable because I asked her if she was in the menstrual cycle. That was the first thing I thought of, though. Yes. Like when you said that, I was like, you know. It is something natural as a coach. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Especially as a head coach. It's like, like what, are you supposed to fucking pretend? Like, it might, Yeah, like there's a thing about that, that, that administration. Am I just supposed to ignore her just because she's a female athlete? Yeah. Just to, just to avoid any lawsuits, any other kind of stuff. It's like, no, like, her health, her, per, like, yeah, her health is, as my, as a head coach, is my priority. I need to find out if she's injured or is just na- something natural her, that she's going through. If it was something yeah. natural, then, okay, like, I will tell her, okay, just walk it off, go, go get some water, let me know when you're ready to come back. You know what I mean? Like, I've done that with, uh, with our athletes. Like, mm-hmm. I, like, in, 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 in something that the distance girls totally understood. And same thing when uh, in classes when the girls tell me, "Oh, I gotta go use the restroom," okay. and, and most of the time I don't, I don't let girls take the, uh, athletes or students take their backpacks to the restroom. But some girls tell me, "Oh, I need it. I understand." Yeah. And they tell me, "Stop!" Like, oh, "Okay, you're you're good to go." Yeah. You know what I mean, like it's yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. With my background of coaching and being the female coach uh, at the JC level, at the high school level, uh, having a wife that was an athlete, having a daughter and stuff, it's just yeah, it's yeah. So for me, it was yeah, something natural, crazy. but yeah, nothing crazy, but. Uh, that complaint got up to the superintendent that was making females feel uncomfortable. One case out of 130 kids. <laughs> they so, brought up that yeah. thing. And same thing. Another another occasion was that um, uh, one time I had to leave practice. The practice had ended at 5:30. I think the practice went longer than normal because I was trying to figure something out with the coaches. And I told uh, somebody. If, uh, uh, I think Coach Quell was there. Um, Somebody had to lock lock the gates, and I told everybody take the stuff out, uh, all, all that stuff out, uh, the backpacks and stuff, and leave it out tight, and then lock the gate. But somebody locked the gate with those with some of my athlete stuff inside the, the track, so my athletes had to jump the track or jump the fence to mm-hmm. get their stuff, and I got in trouble for that for for not being nobody's supervisor. I gave my instructions. I, I I took it, but when I got told about it, I took it. I was like, you know what? 
uh, I'm the head coach. I should I stay there? I, after that one, I stayed and made sure everything was locked. Yeah. I locked everything myself. Like, make sure that either my assistant coaches locked it or I made sure that the gates were locked because at the end mm-hmm. of the day, it was my responsibility. I took responsibility for it, but I already got a warning that people were trying to get after me. Yeah, so you can't slip up. Now. Yeah, I couldn't slip up, and I was taking care of everything perfectly. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, uh, but then this video came out, and it got the spread i wasn't given an opportunity to explain myself i know yeah i was just called yeah, the next the day i got called in the superintendent was in the in the office and yeah pretty much i like i told the coaches like i got my business i, I got my business i got my, my stuff <clears throat> but the superintendent was just there to make sure that the principal and the ad did, did the job of releasing me yeah so the superintendent said that he was going to talk to that that he was going to put me in leave from that race i think it was like April 27th or something like that. It was it was a previous uh, race because I think April 27th was the, was going to be the last home meet against Houston. So it was the previous one that we did where the next day, I think the 17th, April 17th or something like that. Uh, the next day, I got called in. And they asked me for my keys. Um, I told them I had stuff at the, stuff at the track. Um the AD went to the track to get my stuff. So I, I just went to the office. They got all my my supplies, everything that was personal personal to me. Uh, in a way, they didn't let me talk to the athletes, like yeah, and really. that kind of stuff. Just in a way, like they say in the corporate uh, world, I just got walked out out of the yeah. building. Like, Damn, so, like, really? Yeah, just pretty, pretty much the, 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 fuck, that kind man. of feeling. Um, but yeah, it's just no no. No opportunity to talk to the parents to explain myself. No opportunity to to give my point of view or to tell them, oh yeah, I I had to try this uh, option, this the psychedelic therapy because I saw the science behind it, how it helped for depression. Uh, in o- uh, Oakland, uh, doing psychedelics uh, under supervision of a of a medical pro- profession is legal, mm-hmm. or even to purchase it is legal yeah. uh, in Oakland because science has been showing that the benefits of it for depression. I'm like in the podcast, I, I, like when I, when I reviewed the podcast, I was like, did I recommend psychedelics? No, did I, when that's I, what I was no. saying. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't recommend the psychedelics. I talked about my own personal experience and pretty much like r- right now, I'm not recommending psychedelics. I'm not endorsing to try for rec- recreational purposes. Cause it's a, uh, level one drug, which means a lot of prison, uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's a little stuff that, I don't recommend whether it be psychedelics or Molly that also addressed last last podcast. There's a lot of signs, just uh, med uh, med pod for medical research. Mm -hmm. You you research that kind of stuff and all the science is behind it. Yeah. Like same thing is just. I was just talking to my therapist. I think it was yesterday about it. A licensed therapist. And she was like talking about how she's like going to start a business. Yeah. Um, doing that kind of therapy like with the uh, like, psilocybin mushrooms yes the like heroic dose they call it and like she was talking about all the benefits and stuff you know and there is a lot of like medical literature out there talking about like the benefits yeah. it's becoming a lot more if you um, if you go to the med pod it shows you when the article started uh, exploding i think it was in 2018 when they started like a lot of articles started, started coming out Mm-hmm. for yeah. PTSD, for military, for depression. And right now with uh, COVID and all that stuff, we have a lot of kids in depression. The uh, suicide rate has gone up, which science has uh, started to back it up. There are some investors that are trying to start up a mutual fund uh, for psychedelics as well. Mutual fund is a, a portfolio of a lot of companies investing in one in a group of uh, companies to let less risky for mm-hmm. people that don't know what uh, mutual funds. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of science behind it. A lot the, there's a lot of people pushing for for the legal aspect of it for medical purposes not for uh like a party yeah party drug. stuff yeah, it's no. just now it's just um but yeah but pretty much as any uh illegal drug that or any controlled substance drug you should get your doctor to prescribe stuff like that if you if you need it uh with me it's just pretty much uh, i went through the needed uh people to to get them to to do my therapy it mm-hmm. helped me so pretty much but uh, i'm back here not because because i'm not gonna hide from what actually helped me and save, and save my life yeah so <clears throat> and i feel like that that hit of me getting fired from escalon uh, it was just it was unjust it was just like i wasn't given the opportunity to explain myself if any par- yeah. I, I, I told i told parents in the beginning of the parent meeting 
if anybody has any questions, concerns, feel free to talk to me. I, I, I'm open for any appointment. Like, mm -hmm. talk to me. Um, I had three parents that reached out to me in the middle of the season or the start of the season that were supportive of me coaching at Escalon. They yeah. saw the potential. Uh, their athletes were, uh, their student, their um, <coughs> kids were actually under under my coaching system. So it was a great help to see that I actually have some parents uh, supporting me. Yeah. Um, I was I was supposed to, I reached out to them as well uh, the, the morning before my meeting, uh, before I got released, uh, to say, hey, if you guys got any questions, let's meet up at, at, a, at a coffee shop and so talk about it. Let, let me answer any questions that you have. And they, uh, they were they were grateful that I reached out. So the day before, I, I wanted to make an appointment that during the track meet, but I didn't have the opportunity because we had a track meet running. But I knew people had heard about it, so yeah. I wanted to address it to the to the people that knew uh, uh, had my support. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just go, happened so fast. Yeah, it just happened so fast that I was gonna meet up with them after practice. But my meeting was before before practice, and I wasn't able to go to practice. So I text I text some of those parents. I'm available. I got released. They were surprised that I got released. Uh, another the coach uh, was waiting for me together to practice. He called me right after. Uh, to see where I was at, I was like, "Hey, I, I just, I just got released. I, I'm not coaching no more." He was surprised. Yeah, so, uh, he was one of my uh, best supports. Or that that season coach was one of the coaches that helped me the most behind, like registering athletes, doing certain stuff. I felt like he was the one that, like, w wasn't biased on me uh, being there because he he understood me a little bit more, maybe because he went from. Uh, from one school to another. I, I'm not sure if it was raised and grown at Escalon as well. But the other two coaches, the other coach, I, I feel like I want him over towards the end, unless he was being, being fake too. <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 told, I told my wife, I'm so naive that I want to see the best in everybody. Yeah. And that's where little by little, I told her like, little by little, just because of business purposes, people want to say, oh, you're cold, you're mean, this and this. I'm like, well, life turned me like this, man. It's just... <laughs> I give people opportunities, two, three opportunities, and then after that, it's just, it, it would be just dumb of me just to be taken advantage of. Yeah. So, but other than that, it's just, yeah, no no opportunity to, to explain myself. It's just, they just ask for the keys. I, I get them, I talk to the parents, I explain myself. They were grateful that I was still, even through I had been released, I was still willing to meet up with them and talk to them. Which yeah. I'm like, yeah, like pretty much at the end of the day, I didn't do nothing wrong. I, my intentions were well. Mm -hmm. that the my experience with psychedelics was uh during my depression during uh, tw uh 2020 or 2019 because clearly in, in the podcast we, we talked about it that when was the last time that i had done it uh last, last package was uh, january of 2023 mm -hmm. the beginning of last year uh and then my like yeah i couldn't remember i can't remember when was the last time i did it like during that time it was uh, over a year ago so that puts me at 2022 20 the not 2022, 2021. Yeah, during the my depression where I couldn't walk, where like I I, I look at Disneyland in a wheelchair. Yeah, Disney <laughs> Disneyland in a wheelchair. That was fun. That, that <laughs> yeah, that was a whoa. That was the, the only benefit. Uh, Fuck, the, you didn't have to walk around. I didn't have day. to walk. I got nice. pushed around. I got front of the line. <laughs> my, me and my wife was like, yay, front front of the line rides. Oh. I was like, well, everything in life has its benefits, and that, that's what I learned out, out of my depression, that to see the positive on everybody, yeah. on every, every every little thing. Uh, now with I can see the positive on the qualities that uh, Coach Rosie has, but my brain can't comprehend somebody that age having a grudge for somebody that you don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, well, I, I think we were saying like, what was that? I, was I, I a threat to her or something? I'm like, I don't know. It's just maybe my background experience uh, was a threat to her, but if she was a threat, like if I didn't want her there. So I, I would have removed her from the beginning of the season. I would have chosen my own my own coaches. Yeah. So, uh, but I don't know. So I, at this point, there's nothing to to do. Like look back to you know what I mean. Like my my, my only thing that the only reason I'm dropping her name and stuff is just like people need to watch out. You know what I mean? It's just either <laughs> yeah. she fixes her stuff and becomes more humbled, or like people shouldn't really trust <clears throat> her. So Coach Cuevos is still over there, then, right? Yes, Coach Cuevos is still there, and he, he's in charge of just the long distance cross country and our, our track, yeah, track meets too. So, yeah, and same, same thing. Like, like he, after our plan was to take over the cross country, cross country program because that's that, that, like you guys know that's that's my passion. Mm -hmm. Cross country is the best. Someone else runs that, right? Uh, or is 
Well, we, how does that work? We were as distance coaches. We were scheduled to uh, possibly take over the program. Everything went well this season, mm. but uh, Coach Rosie wanted another staff member from Escalon. He's a teacher there that uh, he had been there for for years. He, he shadowed another coach that had been there for. Uh, oh yeah, you remember uh, uh, Coach Beeman? Yeah, his dad used to run the program. Yeah, and this other coach was under him for m- multiple years. That's yeah, great. Beeman is that the history teacher? Wait. I don't know what kind of teacher he was, but he coached track. Yeah, <coughs> he's more like a sprinting guy. But oh, Beeman, that sounds so familiar. He yeah, knew Beeman. how to like was coach he white? everything, kind of skinny white. Yeah, athletic still. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I'm barely getting. So it. he, you, you have him. I think it's our senior year. He started coaching yeah. track. Yeah. So he did soccer for women's soccer for a little bit, and then he started uh, coaching track there as well. Well, that that's one of his passions because his brother coaches at MJC. He does the the Catalan. Mm. So and uh, his dad was a coach at Escalon for multiple years, and this other staff member uh, was under him for for a while. But the this guy, uh, the dad retired, and he took over the program. But it seems like some issues happened because of falling behind some grades or something. That I, I didn't get a full story behind behind it. That the program was taken away from him, so he can focus on work on his own work. Yeah. But this other coaches wanted him back. You know what I mean? It's just, um, I forgot who I told. I think I told Quay, I was like, hey, like, it, before the, the hit, before I got released, I was like, I'm considering getting this coach or, or the coach that was helping me during track to help me during um, cross country, like to make things smoother and much, yeah. much better. But that's a, that was the main agenda to fire me and probably now Cuevas so this this other coaches can take over the program. So it's it's just an in-house yeah. little battle that that they're having. They don't want nobody from outside. Uh, I I, th- I think I was thinking maybe the way I, no, the only way I could have done this probably getting a job at Escalon. You know what I mean? Get, yeah. Buy, yeah. Buying the property there and yeah. then start coaching. I'm like, oh, hey, now I'm part of the community. <laughs> yeah. But even even after I told him like, hey, like I I I told my my wife I love the community. It's a great community. Like uh, uh like and I know somebody from from my business that um has a ranch over there as well. So I'm like, hey, like it would be a great place not to go too far to the mountains and not too far, not, not too close to um, busy cities as, as Modesto to go out there and be part of the community. Yeah. So like build something. But there's a uh, small little group of people that didn't want me there had a bigger voice and power than all the other parents that I know want me there. Same, same thing with the athletes. Like they're like, I, I totally understand. And that's why I have no grudge against the, um, the the parents or like the members is just um this one there's specific coaches that had it after me it's just like it makes no sense because once you look over the the interview they picked and choose <laughs> i'm not sure oh, I, I saw your <laughs> i gotta get a little bit political <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I, I know where where you stands uh your political side after i've I, I seen some of your podcasts but <laughs> uh but i've seen radical liberals pick and choose yeah video clips and post it together to make certain people look bad yeah and that's how that's how it's like how how did we go from minute one to minute 45 just talking about that and then i forgot what minute was uh when you asked about uh mdma then i'm like wow it's just and they ignore the science behind it the fact that i used it for my depression phase Mm -hmm. and that i hadn't used it for years yeah and i still got taken out yeah so it just sense. makes completely no sense but well the, the only thing that makes sense is that they they just didn't want me there yeah so and they decided to risk a lawsuit then to have me there so what was like the conversation when they pulled you into like the office or wherever to talk about it well i think when i just sit down like i said also uh you they, they told me oh you probably know that there's a video roaming around where you're, you're like now <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> kidding no, <laughs> no pretty much like that I, I, I don't lie like yeah, like, I I learned through life like lying gets you into more trouble. So I'm like, no, yeah, it's just it's true. Like, I did a podcast with my previous athletes. Like, they're, they're adults now. Because pretty much, my thing, I'm never gonna talk about my experiences and stuff like this with young, underage kids. It's just, I'm not. I'm not gonna uh, bring it up uh, for legal purposes. Uh, but this podcast, you guys are adults. You guys, uh, how old were you back then? Yeah, 23, 23. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was probably 22. No, yeah, 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 young adults. You guys were. <laughs> Uh, we still kept in contact after, um, what's it called? Uh, you guys graduated. I still, call, yeah, mo- I still keep in contact with most of you guys. 
I gotta meet up uh, Ryan one of these days for break Kool Aid. He he can have beer. I can have a Kool Aid because I'm, mm. I'm I'm not drinking. Oh, that, that, that's another thing that. Yeah, I want to uh, talk about your life too. Yeah, I I, I stopped yeah. drinking this year. I've been. What's it called? Silver? Silver? Yeah. yeah. I've been so, silver for, what, five months already? Nice. Wow, shit. So, yeah, and, the whole year. and yeah, no, no desire to, to drink, none of that kind of stuff. So Was it like New Year's resolution kind of vibe? Yes, yeah, so it was going on more of that, but it's more like my personal goals to focus on my business. Oh, so yeah. I learned some of that stuff. Even social, like drinking socially with family members or stuff like that, like, like it makes it fun, but it still distracts you and numbs you from things that you're supposed to be doing. So I, I told my wife, I, I'm just going to give it up until I reach certain milestones in my business, and then that we can celebrate. Yeah. yeah. So, and, that, and that's another thing that, like, which I find it funny and ironic with uh, me be, uh, being a believer of God, is that I'm focusing on being a better person, and then I'm being, I'm being attacked. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, as I, as I a meme a video, it says, if, if uh, the devil is ignoring you, that means that, you, that, that you're not doing nothing good. Mm. But mm-hmm. if you're doing something good, the devil's poking at you. Yeah, he doesn't want you to progress. So and that's pretty much. I just find it funny. It's just I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to do better, help people, um, achieve better stuff for other people. Not not to get personal gains, but to help others. Because Cuevas helped me when I needed it. So my passion is to help other athletes achieve what their athletic ability that they want to achieve. Because I got injured, I couldn't achieve that. So I want to give back to the community. But this little Roblox that I'm ended up facing with uh, this situation, which brings me back that I was thinking that I'm like, what? Like, if a coach really cares about the performance of their athletes, they will take any help that they can get. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when this coach, uh, that this coach didn't want me there at first, and then this coach just completely didn't want me there now, um, <laughs> it shows that is more for personal gain than the benefit of the athlete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I I ended up focusing to see. W- how many athletes shoot uh, that were able to qualify to sections and masters. So at this point, uh, how many do you think made it to masters from what events uh, this year from Escalon from Escalon? Uh, none. No, so, so, so some made it, <laughs> okay. but, but I guess we, which athletes made it to masters distance distance. <laughs> yeah. So we had, uh, five distance guys, so we had the four by eight team of just distance guys make it to to masters. Nice. One girl that's a freshman uh, made it to masters, and only one thrower. With that, and that, <laughs> that coach is good. Like, yeah, like I felt that he had a after me at the beginning, but I feel I won him over at the end. I proved myself, and he's a great thrower coach. I gotta yeah. say, he he knows what he's doing. Uh, the his program went down a little bit the previous year because he had to take some time off because of his newborn. But I, I saw him coach, and he's a great coach. Like. He knows what he's doing. Um, but, yeah, a- every other event from uh, every other coach just they, did, they didn't pre- they didn't help the athletes make it past sections. So that shows the, the quality and the, qual- the quality that me and Cuevas were able to offer to the distance program yeah. and what, could I, uh, what we could have offered for the cross-country season. Mm-hmm. So, I'd like, imagine in, ye- in a few years, you know, because yeah. it takes yeah. years to build athletes too. You well, know? Cuevas builds programs in one one season to two seasons. Like me, I, I, I was talking to the middle school. I, I, was, I was putting extra time. And same thing like what I was talking before. Uh, the district is trying to give me less of the paycheck when they decided to release me from their own benefit oh, to, for, yeah. for them to save face or be uh, or look good in front of the parents they're trying to come short on my stipend when i was putting times and nights uh looking at results <clears throat> emailing uh uh the newspaper the results of the the athletes taking trips to uh for invitations doing extra work that head coaches need to do uh pretty much uh head, head coaches yeah one yeah. thing about garcia is he, he doesn't cut corners you know yeah, I don't like cut corners, when like, he's doing something he's fucking yeah. doing it all the way and that was, you know? that was what i was doing i, I was neglect neglecting my business i was uh, at that moment i was studying for my mortgage loan license so mm-hmm. I, I passed it nice <laughs> which <laughs> is, is, is what i told some of the parents like the only benefit i see from this is that a week before i had to take my state exam 
for my mortgage loan is when I got let go. Let go. So yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to focus on this because I've been slacking on my studying. I didn't feel prepared to pass it. So it's been the, I just hammered a whole week of just studying yeah. and I passed it. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I, I, I can't take two L's. Yes. <laughs> this is just, but yeah. But nice. I, I put that time. I was putting time to start recruiting for cross country, cross country season. Started reaching out to other schools to start doing invitations at Escalon because they have an all weather track. So mm. I was putting crazy Damn. amount of time. Like I was, I was focused on building this program. Be, be there for five to ten years at Escalon and bring, bring state championships to there. Yeah. Uh, for them to then tell me, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get paid two thirds of my 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 pay. Not even three quarters. You know, what I mean, three quarters is more than. Then uh, three thir- thirds, we go from 66 to 75%. Yeah. B- based on the time that I put and the gas that I put, driving from like Turlock to Escalon, all the miles I was putting in, like, I'm like, now it's just, it's not fair that because they wanted to uh, save face with parents or the people that didn't want me there, that I'm going to get paid less for the for that extra time that I put in. I'm like, no, that's not, mm-hmm. that's not f- Fair. Are they trying to give you less of the stipend because you didn't stay for the whole season? Yeah, like, the, that the logic? that's the argument. Yes, just, uh, the, the logic is, oh, like you didn't coach the whole season, so we're gonna give you less. I'm oh, like, well, damn. I wasn't given the opportunity to finish the season. Yeah. So yeah, you will think, okay, like uh, I think so maybe some of these coaches will thought, oh, well, pretty much less ruin his image. He will finish the season, and then they won't get him back next year. Yeah. But they did such a good job that they got me right the next day. Yeah, fuck, they <laughs> like, did. damn. They didn't even let you, like, okay, well, how, how long does the season go? What does it go from what month to what month? So it starts in February, the start of February. So I start in the, in the early Febru- February. Um, and then it ends depending where, uh, how far uh, pl- um, your athletes go, whether it be uh, sections. Uh, some athletes don't, make, don't even make these sections. So it's TBO championships. You got to make it out. There you go. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make it out of TBL or league championships to qualify to sections. From sections, you're you're competing against uh, San Joaquin section, which is what, in your division, and try to get out of there to go to a state level where you have a whole state. That's crazy. So track, I found that track is always the hardest because you are literally when you run in track, if it's San Joaquin County, North, Northern California, you're you're competing against those little sections of Joaquin and then San Francisco and stuff mm-hmm. to, to get to, to the state. But once you're in state, it's everybody against everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Cross country, they just put you against your division. Oh, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. So I uh, tried to combine all divisions. Um, and then yeah. over here, unless they changed it, but uh, they, I wasn't getting the opportunity to, <laughs> to figure that see. out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's just... So wait, sorry, real quick. If you don't make it, or let's just say maybe sections time, what month is that? Sections. So right now they're in sections right now. So May starts sections. I know they're on the service masters this week or mm, this week or the following week. Um, but I know, yes, sections were the seventh or something like that, or the eighth. The eighth and the ninth was sections, and they had a they had a Riverbank. So mm. Riverbank has built a good. Yeah, program sure. over there um so the section was there yeah and normally <laughs> after like that you know. after that they start doing what's it called a week or two weeks later they do the state or the masters and masters goes to the elk grove or maybe that was for us for d1 mm. yep. yeah yeah I mean, like you guys were d1 d2 chance, we, yeah. we didn't stand a chance <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really yeah. making it to state d1 but, yeah but even then like the times <laughs> that you guys were running I was trying to get some of these guys to run those those times, so uh, shout out to some of so, so, some of the athletes that were able, the distance guys were able to run. Uh, I ran a seventeen five. flat at five at uh, Frogtown and didn't even make it to a section. So yeah, D one D one is just hard, <laughs> man. Fuck. Yeah, you do have some outliers and Frogtown D four D five D six that are fast. I know so Nora has the one of the fastest guys in the in the in California or really? the fastest, Damn. and then maybe in the nation because his dad is the Stanislaus coach oh yeah so he's he's uh, insane he's he's good but then <clears throat> got, i'm not sure if he's d3 or d4 i know that they're moving sonora over to the tvl league which is escalon's league uh mm-hmm. next year but there's there's outliers but when you get that average pace for each division d1 and d2 as a pack they're just yeah killing it so <clears throat> but 
I don't know, but you only got you only got let go like almost like a month before the season ended. You know? Yeah, so pretty much like almost like two weeks. So they put me on leave until they. So I wasn't gonna be no influence in front of the kids, or so they can. Uh, up, uh, yeah, I leave at April seventeenth, which uh, when you put in leave is just sometimes I haven't been let go. So they put me on leave because they wanted to put me on put put me on leave, not yeah. because I wanted to quit or anything that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the board had a meeting uh, May 7th uh, where the superintendent told me in the meeting that they were going to release me. So technically, under payroll, I I was there till May 7th. Yeah. So that, that puts me completing the se- but most of the season. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, they decided to release me. They, th- they decided to uh, go against the contract that we agreed upon when – they hired me. Same thing. I, uh, to save time and save money, I told them to add me to the substitute list so I, I could be in campus or in, in the district so I can be um, uh, locally. And yeah. that, that, that's how I was getting uh, junior high athletes motivated, coming yeah. to the program and getting re- everybody ready. And even the next day, they removed me from the whole system. Damn, really? It was just that, that. I'm like, there you go. It's just that they quick. quick. They were quick. They were Did just, they have a new head coach? Because they're moving fast at this point. Well, the the guy that was helping me in the background with the computers and all that kind of stuff, like yeah, great great coach, he 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 took a position of the of the program. Mm. Oh, that, that, that was the only option they had, which uh, yeah, yeah he he did good in his previous uh, school that he was at, so he's uh, I was confident that he was gonna do good. Uh, any um, any coaches that were, that I had contact with to. For the next season, and uh, I was getting prepared for cross country season and stuff. I told him, "Hey guys, I'm like hey, I was polite, I was professional. I mean, like, there's no reason for me not to be professional and just like, yeah, do do Escalon and asking all kinds of stuff. I was like, no, I just afford. I told everybody politely, hey, I won't be coaching Escalon no more. Contact this coach for any future uh, situations. Uh, some of the coaches that from other schools that uh, that was good. Uh, I had build 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 like. Uh, cool relationship with yeah like, it's like what what happened so uh, i was on this I, I told them straight up like what had happened mm-hmm. and even they they couldn't believe it <coughs> so it's like yeah it's definitely because well, i feel like head coaches you know th- or just coaches like i'm sure there's been worse you know there's yeah. Been worse oh stuff, yeah man you know, where they're like sure. they'll, they'll put on leave for a couple of weeks or they'll get talked to but to get fired is crazy yeah you just, just i like couldn't that. fucking believe it when you yeah. said that was a joke I was there's like, a what? group chat with us three because you would ask us to like yeah. take it down because he said it was going around the team or whatever and it was like yeah like two days later <laughs> yep. i'll be fired i'm sorry it was so <laughs> funny because he said want to hear a joke you want to hear yeah you want to hear a joke sure Shit. he says the podcast is still up on Spotify. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then he said, do you want to hear another joke? And he's like, they let me go. <laughs> I was let like, me go. fuck. That I couldn't cool. believe it, man. But So you went, you went in the office or whatever, right? And they said, so you know there's a video circling around. Yes. And what happened? And well, I told him, yes. like, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty much, yeah, I know about it. It's just, uh, I told him, like, I, I don't remember what, what I talked about. It's been, it's been a while. Yeah, it was uh, over a year. Yeah, it was over a year. They they knew the same thing. They, they knew it was <laughs> like a little bit over a year and stuff. Um, some someone like administration knew that. Um, that, that it, it was past past stuff. You Did they mean? name specific reasons, like things that you said in no. the pod? No, that's what's annoying. Well, well yeah. pr- pr- pretty much the, the only thing I said was that the psychedelic, uh, the psychedelics that that I mentioned about like my experience with psychedelics. Mm-hmm. And, my, but, and, they, and I did tell them that pretty much talking about that, I, I put administration, which was uh, the principal and the AD in a tight spot. Uh, but yeah, pretty much the. But when 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 I was when I got in there, sat down, I had already gotten the vibe that like just just it looking was over. Yeah, that was over. Looking at, at the body language of the super the superintendent was just sitting there, chill. Yeah, you know I mean, oh, fuck. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> like not giving that. No, he he was there to make sure that his uh and the the principal and the AD did their did their job because yeah. they hired me. Uh, and I, I I read the room like before I went in. I was like, should I take my keys? I'm like, nah, they're gonna ask for them. Why why waste time? Yeah, it was just I took my keys. I took everything Fuck in case. But uh, in the bottom of my heart, I still hoped that they they wouldn't ask for my keys. They would give me an opportunity. But no, it was just I I, I just accepted the the situation. I'm like, you know what? It's just I'm not I'm not gonna be begging. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not gonna be begging and bugging. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. if like I I know what I uh my intentions were good. My intentions were great. Uh, 
pretty much any coach that wants to coach at a high school level, especially when they're a walk-on, uh, walk uh, we, we're doing it because of the passion, not because yeah, of the pay. Yeah, for sure. We come out negative. Yeah, I'm sure the pay is not even yeah, worth it. Yeah, especially with the, the amount of miles I was putting in, <laughs> going from, from my, my business and uh, my other job sites and stuff to Escalon just for practice and uh, taking t- time days off from work and business to go to – uh, get the track meets ready and stuff, yeah. and then for them to try to undercut me for for my pay, it's like no, nah, it's just no. I'm not. I'm not. Are you gonna take like legal action against that? I'm 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 gonna look into taking advice and see what happens because uh, I emailed them Monday to ask them about the the the, the pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I emailed the HR and talked to the uh, one of other uh, administrations, and uh, HR didn't reply back. So she didn't reply back. That's bad. Yeah, <laughs> they're supposed yeah. to reply. Yeah, they're supposed to reply. Yeah. They're HR. Yeah, the, the yeah, one who replied was the the guy that hired me, and he's like, <laughs> they're just uh, trying to uh, pay you two thirds. They're gonna pay you two thirds. The additional one to pay you two thirds. Which I, two thirds is crazy. Yeah, two thirds is not even like three quarters. Like yeah, the three quarters. Like I'm like, okay, well, I didn't finish two weeks or something. <laughs> maybe three quarters and stuff. But like, no, it's just. And I told him, I sent, I sent him a reply. Um, I told him the situation, like, hey guys, like, I don't think it's fair. Like, I got released. Uh, by their decision, some people will consider this that I got fired. It was a hit. It was a racial hit, where it was uh, yeah. something I was given opportunity. Uh, I told him like, "Hey, the the way you guys handle this to to let me go from one day to another, I think me giving you till Friday for a response for a full pay uh, check. I think it's plenty of time." Yeah. Do you think they replied? <laughs> no. No, they haven't replied. <laughs> so I gave them a whole week. They haven't replied. Uh, Technically, they still have until June tenth. Yeah, they're quick when they wanted to be. Yeah, they're, they're quick when they want to be, <laughs> man. Trust me. All of a sudden, they're they're all quick. So, but I I, I know that yeah. if they have the opportunity to fix their stuff, once now now that I mentioned that I'm I'm maybe looking to legal uh, issues uh, to fix it. But technically, they got till June tenth to give me their the full stipend. Mm. Uh, but I'm gonna start getting advice. Yeah. Because pretty much, yeah, it's not. I still believe that when you let a bully bully you around, they will keep bullying other people around. Yeah. But when they have somebody that st- stands up against the discrimination, stuff like that, that's when things change. <coughs> so uh, if, they did, if they did this to me, imagine how many other people they have discriminated yeah. uh, because they're not part of the Escalon community. People that want a job, but because they're not, they, they don't got connections, they didn't get hired. Stuff like that. And that's one-on-one yeah. California bylaw. <coughs> so... But I, I I will see what what advice I get. Um, but yeah, I'm still waiting to see what they do with Cuevas because I've been talking with Cuevas and they got it after him as well. Really? So the same thing. I think uh, what was his sections or TVL? So I think it was uh, for championships for the uh, Frosh Soft. He had to leave early because of because uh, he he got in a car accident. He has metal over his neck and er- everywhere. So. He's also like 70 years old, right? Yeah, he's like. so he's 30 years older than me. He's 64. Okay. <laughs> is he still running or no? Not yes. his accident. Dude. Really? Yeah, he had a crazy accident. Every, like he, he was trying to get back to run. He's telling me, like, I'm, "I'm gonna get back to run." I'm like, "That's why I got back to run." I'm not sure if you guys been seeing Strava. I've been back at run. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Me I'm too. Running. Nice. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> past like three like, weeks. Yeah, like like I told you last time when when in the podcast, Cuevas is always, always such a motivation to to anybody because oh, yeah. he shows what was possible. Yeah, it's like like if you're being lazy now, you got this old guy, 64, Dude. still pushing it. He's doing like a 13 mile like run in Mammoth yeah. with us. It's like a half marathon, you know. And yes, destroying kids, destroying. And yeah, so. like the age of at that time was probably like still 60 or late 50s. Yes. Yeah, I think around that time, yeah, he was in his 50s. Yeah. And right after an accident, after everything he's been going through, uh, he also like I found out that he also went through some uh, personal issues because some other coaches locally ha- have it against them against his su- success oh, so really? it's just yeah he went to, like i didn't talk to him for about two years i thought he had to just disappear and didn't want to talk to me but then i found out what he what he went through i'm like and then i find out who made him go through that <coughs> yeah so his position when he was uh, coaching at east union how uh, long had he been there he'd been there for a, a oh, while oh, right? he, he had been there for years i think i went in 2018 i went over to help him out that's where the other coach up here, you know, got upset with me because I yeah, dished yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I heard that on yeah. the pod. Today. Yeah, so he got upset. So I went over there and 
I think that was the first season he was there to help him rebuild the program. And four years into it, like his guys were ready to take state. So he had built the program that solid. Yeah. Like, uh, his kids were running uh, sub 16s. Like, it was like his yeah. top five. And they were, ah. the, yeah, they, they, they were ready to take state. But a head coach from a local JC. Okay, okay. <laughs> just be careful, okay? <laughs> no, nah, I don't care. No, nah, because no, pretty much. It. So like, here it is Demetrius. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you, you guys can leave that. So I found out that um, Demetrius uh, pretty much got Cuevas fired. And Cuevas went to a crazy cycle of emotions and stuff because, like, Cuevas was at the local JC. No, Cuevas, oh, well, East Union. East, East Union. Oh, so he was yeah. there. His uh, Demetrius' daughter was there yeah. running as well. Yeah, yeah. But Cuevas had that, and I'm not sure, like, because Demetrius is a head coach at a JC administration. Thought that Demetrius was a better coach, so they yeah. took the position from Cuevas, and uh, 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 Demetrius was trying to be all. Uh, alpha on him like like well, if you don't do this i'm gonna fire her if you're gonna do this i'm gonna fire you so Cueva just decided to avoid the issue and just let the program coach g coaches at east union too no man like what he, the fuck yeah exactly How does he, even he, he is he, he just went in there to take um what's it called the title or like what's it called recognition for mm-hmm. the team doing great oh, okay yeah. like what went like Cuevas had put in the, the team. And same thing over here when, when I ran for Cuevas, uh, MJC. Uh, Cuevas has always been humble. He has never cared about who took recognition for uh, the achievement yeah. that he had his athletes. Demetrius had always taken uh, recognition for the success that the distance guys brought into the Because he's program. like technically. Yeah, he's technically the head the coach. The head coach, but so, he's a sprinting yeah, coach. Yeah, Cuevas didn't care who took recognition. He has never cared. Same thing over here at Escalon. He does not care. He, 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 didn't, he did not even come out on the team picture. Oh, yeah. Uh, Escalon, because he doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Like, that's him. He cares about helping athletes become better. I had better. him on the podcast. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I, think, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking. I was thinking yeah, of bringing him in. Yeah. But then Demetrius went in there to try to take the position away. They gave the head coach position to Demetrius. Demetrius tried to technically bully him out of the program so he, he can keep uh, keep it. Cuevas just left. The next season, uh, I forgot. I don't know what program they were using. They injured four of the athletes. Only one was good. And yeah. they got killed. It's just they didn't win state. And then when the, we started coaching over here at Escalon, like I, I'm not sure if you guys remember. You guys went to MJC. Yeah. So I sent yeah. three guys. Yeah. I sent uh, was it Angel and you guys. Angel, Me, Andrew, Angel, Chris. and Andrew. So four guys. Yeah. So I sent Demetrius four great athletes. Well, you didn't run. I first. didn't run at it. Okay. <laughs> so, I just, I just so, so it's three. three. So I sent three athletes. Yeah. Because he got me into Enox. Mm-hmm. And what happened with with my three great athletes? Yeah, I quit. nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Not a yeah. Shit, nothing, nothing. So, <laughs> why am I gonna send athletes? Even I, I, I'm a pirate from heart. You know what I mean? I'm I'm JC all day. Alumni, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm there, but mm-hmm. I'm not gonna send athletes to get destroyed at a program that doesn't is not producing. Yeah, it was bullshit. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so we we were talking to our top guys to go to Delta because Delta is performing, mm-hmm. and when Demetrius found out that. Uh, we're sending people to Delta. He started talking smack and started saying that Cuevas, I'm, I'm not sure it was recent in the past, but um, we found it from one of, one of our parents from Escalon that Demetrius is saying, oh, Cuevas runs fast because he's taking steroids and he probably what is giving it to his hell? athletes. So when, when I found out that uh, Demetrius is saying that Cuevas is giving steroids to his athletes, which is crap, I took us in offense because I ran for MGC. I ran for Cuevas multiple years. Yeah. And he was one of the most clean persons Dude, ever. he's such a... Yeah, good guy. Like he's yeah, Quavo is so good, you know? and Quavo is so skinny. I'm like, if he's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He's, he's so he's, scrawny. He's bones, man. <laughs> yeah. just, but for for Demetrius to go around and mouthing great coaches, especially like for him to spread a rumor that he's giving it to his athletes, I'm like, that takes credibility from my achievements as a North Coast champion, at MJC. So I'm like, yeah. I take that offense. I was like, champ. no, it's just you don't go around saying a coach is giving steroids to his athletes because it. Yeah, you may try to damage his image and try to get. It parents on, on your side but you damage any athlete that has has ever ran under uh that coach before yeah because they'd be like oh well it was only, yeah. only because of steroids or something. yeah so it was just like and for 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 me that i will run day in day out put my effort and everything for for there's for there to be that little stigma like oh yeah garcia did steroids i'm like what the hell is it no it's just yeah. I, I, 
like like once looking back and they hear some some of the stories i know athletes in the uh, that did their stories that they didn't get caught mm-hmm. so i'm like okay well shit like i, I i'm not gonna be naming athletes that i know uh were doping yeah. but it's like no like i was clean all all our guys were clean um Cuevas has always been good about nutrition uh vitamins and things that can uh naturally help us yeah. improve yeah, one of the stories, remember, was the mud thing? Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the mud, mud, to, mud to recover. Um, <laughs> that I see how all kind of stuff. And that, that's one of the things that, that they're trying to go to uh, after Carlos right now because uh, we've been rolling out and massaging uh, some of the athletes out, and they're trying to get him for that. Like, to like try it's to, inappropriate or yeah, something? Yeah, it's, it's inappropriate. Uh, the, for the uh, Fresh Up Championship. for stuff, man. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> like, one of the girls performed real good, but he didn't see it. So the next day, he asked her, like, hey, great job. Here, g- give me a hug. C- congratulations he, he tried to congratulate her for doing good in, in her race and then it seems like some of the coaches saw her or something like that and he got brought in and told her like we can't have you be hugging co- uh, athletes uh don't be doing that yeah. so he, he got slapped in the hand for supposedly doing that and uh and i think that's that's from coach rosie like this coach rosie is pu- pu- pushing right. this this yeah. stuff we're getting all the drama and, Dude, i know all yeah. the, this, this is a little fucking, scary i know and, distance but, running team. uh <laughs> sections I think it was, was it sections? <laughs> no, it was uh, TBO championships. This same coach went uh, went around hugging athletes. Rosie? Yeah, Rosie. Uh, right, right, right in front of everybody. She, yeah. she was over here like. That's normal. I mean, yeah, that's, that's I'm right. not handshaking yeah. my coach, you know? Yeah, no, it's like, yeah. congrats. Especially after me, a like, win. Yeah, yeah, after a like, win, like stuff like that. That's like we've, so, we've everything's grinding, so raw you know? there. Yeah, which is like, it, it, it sort of shows a too standard. There and one ton. It's not like he's like if you're if he's hugging her all the yeah, time. Yeah, like like in practice, like it's a okay. special a special uh, yeah, preference. Just her. Yeah, yeah, like stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it's, it's totally funny. understandable. But it was just a congratulations, uh, <laughs> Coach Rosie. I seen her doing it through the whole season. Yeah, to two athletes. But now she's trying to get that. Now she's trying to get Coach Cuevas removed from the program. It's uh, a double standard. Well, too, I don't know like, if you're comfortable saying this, but or if you know, you know, if he's comfortable you telling this but like how does he feel like does he feel like is he annoyed is he just like Cuevas yeah so Cuevas is doing this as well for passion not because he needs the money he doesn't yeah. need the money after his accident um, <laughs> he doesn't need that thing but he's doing it because he's doing a a, a favor so in a way he's like I, I do believe he's annoyed and that, that's what I, my belief he's annoyed because it's like like why does he need to go through all this stress when he has grandkids when he has his wife when he has his children to be but going through all this drama with he could be retired and just yeah he could be retired right on his own same thing with me i came in over here with good intentions to help out the program to help out the coaches and just to be a figure in the back yeah that that was it but i'm not sure where the termination came like why they saw me as a threat yeah so the hell man yeah it was just but Uh, where did it, where did Quavo's coach when we were in a Enox East he's in, Union? Oh, right? so he's, he's in, in Manteca. Okay, so he's been there for yeah. He so he, okay. yeah, he jumped around Manteca, you know, like crazy. He was a Western Ranch at one point, East oh, Union, yeah. Manteca High. No, th- it was Western Ranch, yeah, I think, Western when Ranch. we were in Mammoth, like when we were around Quavo's and his team. Maybe it was Western Are you Ranch. Sure it was Western Ranch after we graduated and then because remember we he went, was east union <laughs> i think i'm driven i remember western ranch the name for a reason but i do remember east Union. that's too. where felix was coaching yeah. right western ranch yeah western ranch yeah, yeah that's, why. I think that's and, why i'm confusing and then, it. then he went to yeah i think it was that he was felix was a western ranch well was a east union uh and then i think felix then went to mjc for a bit yeah but that's where you were you were you yeah were i was under felix, felix yeah yeah so, but I think the only school I don't think Quavos ever went to was Sierra High. Mm. But he went to Manteca, East Union, and West Ranch. Yeah. And now <laughs> uh, he got pulled over here to um, Escalon because uh, it's pretty, pretty much people, people know people. Say, hey, like, we, we want to rebuild the program. The Because, yeah, the, the program had been getting killed. And one of the staff meetings or, like, coaching meetings that we had, uh, Coach Rossi said, like, pretty much the previous years, we didn't have a good team because of COVID, because they were redoing the track, this and this, this and that. Was like, okay, mm-hmm. makes sense. But what about every other school that still does something yeah. great with their athletes? Yeah. So, yeah, you can say, oh, well, like, it takes years, <laughs> it takes a couple of years to, to build a program up. It's like, not nah, really. <laughs> I, I seen Cuevas build great athletes in one season. Yeah. yeah. That be me. 
<laughs> it's just, I'm like that. That guy has magic. Even our schools, it's like it was a quick turnaround from beginning to every. Yeah. Every season yeah. was a dramatic yeah, change. Was, yeah, you ever seen that your times from when yeah, I got there totally. and keep going? Yeah, yeah you crazy. can see the difference. So with with a good good system, mm-hmm. you can have great athletes, which Escalon High has great athletes, great students. Like the their focus is athletics and uh, no academics and athletics. That's Escalon, which yeah. that's why I, I loved it. But when you have coaches that are just there as a hobby and just to take credit or yeah. just to feel cool because the athlete just likes them, you ain't going to build a great program. You you need a coaching staff that can put a discipline. I, I, I was a discipline guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, no, so like you guys, when you guys got to know me, I'm serious. I'm always walking with a serious face because I'm always thinking. I'm always <laughs> got a lot of things going through my mind. Yeah. But you yeah. sit down with me. Yeah, yeah, well, we have a great time. It's just yeah. fun, 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 fun time, and that's what the athletes got to know me. That they got to know. Oh, yeah, like I think even in the in the bus, some girls just opened up to me to get advice about the boyfriends and stuff. I'm like, I I, I don't want to get too deep into the conversation, but I try to just yeah. It's like like me, just focus on school, focus on on your thing, and like forget about the guys. Yeah. Where when the good guy comes around, he's gonna come around. Like stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just yeah, good life Simple. advice. Yeah. That's like something that I think we both liked about you too. Is like. Yeah. Well, yeah, we you talked know, about it last You're like time. a mentor yeah. as well as a coach. You know? Yeah, get, get you guys ready for life. Nah, yeah. rah, rah, you about the high school thing, this and that, just like all that kind of stuff. Nah, like a real coach gets you ready for life, not just for, oh, get, let, let's hit this time and good luck after you leave me. Yeah. Uh, so stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. It's just. So <clears throat> all in all said, I know you were saying kind of prior to the starting that like you feel that your coaching like career is like you feel like uh oh yeah dispassionate about it right now is that like kind of where your head's at because of the whole situation and, and yeah that's pretty much what i told hr and then i'm like this is just completely like is it even worth it you know what i mean yeah when, 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 it's when, disheartening yeah i'm not sure if it's um california just with all the politics and everything like coaches can't be coaches and teachers can't be teachers no more because the same thing teachers are struggling because all the laws all the stuff like now we got furries in schools and stuff. Like, <laughs> like I thought this yeah. is the same, man. It was just I don't even know what that is. What the furry? what's a furry? Uh, I think it's like just people who dress up as like like they have tails animals. And stuff, you know? Yeah, oh, okay. they they believe they're animals. I heard that you know because some right now. Okay. So and you gotta tater to their to what they want. Uh, so they want a litter box. You're supposed to provide them a litter box. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like I like Texas a litter box. Yeah. Okay. I like Texas philosophy. If you think you're a cat, you go to the to the to the pet pound, <laughs> I'm like I like Texas. I'm like yeah, Texas. Yeah, if, man. Back in the yeah. day, you had that kind of situation. You you got help. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's not normal to think you're an animal. Yeah. But do you think? Do you ever consider yourself moving? You think? Well, I'm thinking of a. Uh, I want to finish uh, building my business here in California. So I leave some managers behind uh, managing my office, and then I want to go to Carson City to expand my business in Nevada because uh-huh. Nevada has. One of the lowest tax rates and all kind of stuff. Oh yeah, um, I've heard great valleys, great uh, areas to uh, have a farm. Great gambling. No, no, that's, that's the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> the gambling, no. Like I, I, I say, like if you're gonna gamble, might as well invest in the stock market. Yeah, that's true. at least if when you gamble, you lose your money at the casino, you lost it. Mm-hmm. With investments, at least you own something. Yeah, yeah. you have that it little percentage. Back, yeah, you know? it may come back. <laughs> But Bitcoin, please. Yeah, Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin. No, yeah. It's doing great right now. Yeah, Bitcoin will come back up. So, That's well, I, I'm not. For no, purposes, not a, I'm not emphasizing. Not financial case. advice. Yeah. No, no financial advice. I am an investment advisor, but do your research, do your own thing. I'm not uh, <laughs> telling you to invest in any. Yeah, kind of. No, invest in anything. We're not telling you to do yeah. any drugs. We're yeah. not telling yeah. you any running. Yeah. Be clear you here. Well, you should, you should run for your health. Uh, yeah. 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 But no, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. There's safer vehicles that you can invest on for stuff crypto and all kind of stuff is volatile uh invest on your own risk uh, <laughs> but so yeah. carson city you're yeah. thinking about well carson city may be the closest thing because i because my parents have the their other uh, ranch in lagrange so uh-huh. if uh if i move too far like trying to go south anywhere there's i'm still in california yeah the closest way to get out of california carson city carson yeah. city Right by Tahoe, yeah, right? Just like Tahoe, right across right the border, yeah, yeah. Because, or I can go. Uh, I think Reno's too crazy. I because I know um, Reno's the Husk, crazy. Yeah, Huskies, <laughs> the Huskies are are up in the Nevada. 
Oh, or the like university. wolves and shit? Yeah. No, no, the university. Oh. So, no, never. <laughs> I was like, you scared of the wolves? No, no, the university, <laughs> they, they got a good uh, program over there. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm like, I'm already thinking about my kids, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. so go there, Reno's too. Business-wise, being close to Reno, I can expand my financial business. Yeah. And, and there, and Reno nice. will keep growing. That's why I want to go to Carson City, be three, hour, three hours away from my parents and Modesto, like local uh, people. And do that, but yeah, I'm I'm thinking of moving because, yeah, like I, I told some of the parents, my supporters that were helping me throughout the season, like it, it's discouraging, uh, um, yeah, like having to deal with all this politics at the K through 12. I just wanna if I go if when I get back to coaching, I may go back to a university or uh, yeah. JC and coach there. But after this, is who knows if I'm if I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna focus on my business and enjoy life. Yeah. And, and maybe just coach my kids. I mean, if they got if they want to get into running, then I may get into coaching because of them. But at this point, it's just I feel like your like purpose of being on this earth is to coach. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. like it's uh, you're so passionate about it. I never had a coach that was as passionate as you were, you know, in any sport. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like, fuck, you know, you care. Yeah, like you're just, not there for the money; you're there to. You know, and we invest like me and Cuevas. Like, I think I got it from Cuevas. Me, Weekends, me, like, yeah, fuck, we, we put money runs. out of our pocket, mm-hmm. yeah, like, we're not making money. yeah, we're no. making money, we're, we're wasting money, but we're yeah. doing it for the future generation. Mm-hmm. When some of these coaches just want to do it for the short term recognition of the athletes, oh, yeah, I thought that was my coach. Like, no, it's just there's a there's different types of coaches, and I've like from what I've seen from Cuevas' experiences, how a lot of coaches have gone after him as well. I'm like. There are some sour coaches that go after good coaches and ruin the, the opportunity of a lot of great athletes to achieve great potential. So, but I don't know. It's just maybe down the road I will get back to coaching. Like this uh, experience left me a little sour taste. I'm like, you know what? It's just, but I'm not yeah, going to. it's still fresh. Yeah, you know? but I'm not going to blame future potential athletes. I'm not going to, you say, I'm going to deprive future athletes from achieve, like me coaching them mm-hmm. just because of one person. Yeah. So, but I just want to be more prepared next time. Yeah. So, oh, now you know it's a life lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, life lesson, whatever you put in social media, it stays yeah. there. Remember, <laughs> so we're gonna do everybody knows your life story. <laughs> but what you said too about like when you're doing the right things, that's when the the devil comes out. Yes, you know? that's that's. At least you know you're doing the right things. You know. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> don't that, that, that let it discourage like, you. Yeah, well, when you're getting attacked left and right, uh, that means you're doing the right thing. When everything seems perfect, not no no opposites are going. Is because you're not focusing on what God wants you to do. Yeah. So you that you, that was not no need for him to mess around with you, yeah. and that, that that's a life lesson. It's just uh, and same thing is just when you're under pressure, when you feel like you're, you're in the dark. I, I heard this one in the business training. Uh, mm-hmm. When you're under pressure, you don't see no light out. Uh, that's when you're about to explode and have success. Same mm-hmm. thing with your podcast and stuff, and that down the road, because uh, under what conditions are diamond created? Yeah. Pressure makes diamonds, yeah, baby. Yeah, pressure in the dark, all <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. So that, that, that's, that's the thing you got to do. Yeah. It's just when you feel that, like, like you hit a roadblock, you hit a wall, and you're not, you can't progress, just push a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Keep going. And, and that's pretty much what I think I told you guys. Well, I told it's you a guys metaphor when, for life. Yeah, life. Like, running. same thing with running. Mm-hmm. When you feel tired and you got one lap to go, just, just tell yourself, I just got one more lap. One more lap. 200 meters. Mm-hmm. 100 meters. Just keep going. Just keep going. That, that, that yeah. kind of mindset. And it will help you through life. But I don't know. Not a lot of people. Like I said not a lot of people have the opportunity to get mentored. With like, I, I got I, I got I got gifted to be mentored by Cuevas, and you can say you guys got the ability to get mentored by me. And hopefully, yeah. you guys can mentor somebody else the same way that I mentored you guys. <coughs> but it's just about keeping it real, keep keeping things um, down to earth, and people will respect you. The haters will hate. Which the numbers in the industry is eighty will hate, twenty will respect. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the numbers for everything. Uh, eighty percent of businesses go out of business, twenty percent succeed, and mm. it goes up to that. It's an eighty twenty, eighty twenty. Yeah, Same I hear thing. that number a lot. Yeah, so you just gotta do that thing. Is just, but at the end of the day, is just if uh, I'm, I'm I don't got no grudge against um, you can say administration at Escalon High because I know I had great support there. They tried to fight for me. They tried to like. Keep me, keep me a staff. It was just um, small hand of people who had a control of the superintendent. Because I, I honestly believe the superintendent want, wanted me there 
he would have given me the opportunity. Mm-hmm. But he's the one that just didn't care. Yeah, didn't care. He just he, like he's he's a he's not a sports guy. He's yeah. more a textbook kind of guy, which I understand. But hopefully, after this situation, he learns. It's just I, I'm gi- I'm giving the district an opportunity to say, hey guys, like I don't want to push this to a legal process, but I'm not gonna be rubbed from. I invested so many hours. I I got uh, relief from a position unjustly. Yeah. Because I didn't do nothing while I was working there. All all my things I was doing was perfect. Uh, yeah, it's just all that kind of stuff. My experience on that. I, like they didn't question if it was uh, administered by a doctor or how was my experience and stuff. They they didn't ask questions. They just fired me. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. and they didn't give you specifics either. Yeah, they didn't give me specifics. Yeah, what they said about me talking about the mm. psychedelics and stuff. But they, they were just speaking and choosing. Probably, uh, I, I know. I think so. some people did hear the whole thing. I'm not sure the superintendent heard the whole whole audio. There's no way, right? Because that's what I was an thinking. There's like, no way they listened to an hour and a yeah, half. Yeah, it was two hours because I think the camera. Oh yeah, turned off and then we got it back on yeah. at one point. So, but yeah, no, it was just that no opportunity is just. But yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm done getting it. Like, I got to the point. Is just I I hit depression. I I was I was on the dark point. I came out of it. I, I was like, I'm just gonna be humble. I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna treat others the way I want to be treated. All that kind of stuff. And at one point, I was like, okay, that's too naive. I can't always just be like that. Yeah. This lesson mm-hmm. trauma is like, no, I got, I got to put my foot down sooner or later. Mm-hmm. Just not, mm-hmm. maybe not for me, but for the future people that come after me. It was just this, this, this discrimination that sometimes happens in small communities that everybody knows is like, uh, don't ask, don't say kind of situation that everybody knows that if you're not part of a little community, you're not going to get hired. Yeah. But when you decide to mess around and not, work with somebody that's willing to work with you then okay Let, let's make let's make this whole thing public you know what i mean i, I don't want to make it public but if we have to make it public and my uh <laughs> that's what we're, we're here for it yeah like if, if my um lawyers t- say hey yeah l- let's go for it then i will go for it if they say oh no it's not it's not worth it like then i, I won't go after it but yeah. like same, same thing when i say when they give you a platform like this Talk about it. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. th- this is the new power that the platforms that yeah. podcasts have yeah. because mainstream media has been hi- hijacked. Mm-hmm. Anything that you see in ma- mainstream media is just whether it be CNN or Fox, they're all hijacked. It's just big corporations, yeah. big pharma. That, that's that's our agenda. It's just. But Joe Rogan is one of the podcasts I like to listen to because it's just real stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He stays yeah. so neutral. He listens to professionals and all kind of stuff. Yeah. And I've, I listen to other podcasts as well. Uh, Bill Whittle and some other big dudes uh, for business purposes. But, yeah, having a platform to talk and express rather than being censored by mainstream. Hey, even, if, yeah, Facebook censors me or Instagram. Yeah. I, 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 I've been flagged <laughs> by Instagram. Damn. Oh, really? yeah, I think it was a... Um, the furries was a, tweet? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I got... was a fact reviewed or something like that. I put a picture of nasa nasa took pictures of at the shore from like 1970 1980 every year oh yeah yeah i'm not sure you've seen that one like it's like and then the, i've seen the ones where the earth is just getting more and more dry and like and the water's kind of well the water is just moving around like if you look at the ge- ge- geography some areas and it, it, like that's my personal theory i need to look more into it uh when i have time <laughs> um, <laughs> as the as the earth moves around some areas start getting greener and then the other areas start getting drier uh africa the pyramids that area used to be a big forest oh back yeah in the day. and probably in this side of the world it was different but the the picture i saw about nasa like there's this whole global warming that uh, oceans are rising all this stuff that they've been pushing through social uh mainstream media since 1980s mm-hmm. yeah. and the, this picture shows that the ocean is not coming through like like the you, you would think that the um, the beach will be take, taken over, mm-hmm. but yeah. the ocean stays the same. Like yeah. and you got buildings, got uh, civilization growing by the ocean. I'm like, where, where's the inch of yeah. like of water? And, and when water. I got fact checked, it's like uh, this is uh, climate change science is sound. Mm. I'm like, I don't know what to believe anymore. The sound is so much different stuff. Well, no, about if you talk it, about global, you know? like if you talk to big big business people, because well, when you get into the business world, it's like what business guru billionaire is going to build a billionaire 
a billion dollar hotel by the ocean when he knows in five years it's gonna if be it taken would be out. underwater. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's business. <laughs> These guys do their damn freaking research. Yeah, <laughs> simple one on one. They're not gonna build a damn hotel that's gonna be billions of dollars for it in five ten years. That the way it's always that, that's what the mainstream media says in five years, ten years, like we're, we're gonna be underground. Yeah, but it hasn't happened. The only town that's going under is a, a town in Italy, but it's because it's sinking. Oh yeah. So it's just oh, the way Venice, I think. Yeah, Venice. Because yeah. of the way of the buildings is sinking. Yeah. That's why uh, that's happening. I think something in China. When you put too much um weight in top of the land <clears throat> and the oceans come, they take the sand. They take the sand and then it starts yeah. dropping down. Not Which because the sense. water is rising, mm. but because the way of the land is being pushed down. The sample is used. But business, if you look at business, they they're not gonna build big uh, vacation stuff in Mexico and stuff when oh a couple of years we're gonna be underground now yeah. it actually makes no sense mm-hmm. so but uh, I'll get off topic but uh, <laughs> about politics no, but okay. yeah no it's just but yeah, what was that so are you running now oh yeah it's like yeah I started how long have you been running for I think that I just completed four weeks oh, so nice. so my current program I'm running four miles every day Fuck. Hey. well not every day my five five days out of the week okay mm. And I think when I started, I was like, I couldn't break freaking eight minutes again. I'm like, God damn. Like, Dude, it's bad. Yeah. I've been running for like two or three weeks now. I try to run every day that I'm not going to jujitsu. And it's fucked. <laughs> like, it and my, my ego like wants me to like, like I try to fucking what, keep what, a good pace. No, I'm like, you, fuck, I'm tired. No, you, you got to remember like, I, I'm, if you see my last uh, run yesterday, I kind of forced myself to stay at a eight minute pace. Oh, yeah. So, but I started like at 817 and then I got it down to like eight oh two or, or not i think my second mile was like a 750 so something <laughs> yeah and i was like, okay let, let, let me just average in the eight minute pace because my first one was too fast or too mm-hmm. slow like let me just say that that eight minute pace because uh, yeah like if, like i always tell you guys you guys need recovery like mm-hmm. if i'm running five times i need an easy day sometimes i take i i take my wife so i can run next to her so i don't push myself is she starting to run too <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm forcing her but she we go to the gym <laughs> we go to planet fitness she goes into a treadmill or elliptical or something. I go out in the canals uh, rather yeah. than series. I just like t- take the canals. I love the canals. Um, but I do that. But then the way back, I like to do my cutbacks. I start uh, slow and then I start picking it up, picking it up. Yeah. And I think my fastest so far in the, these last four weeks has been like a 630. Fuck. Where, really? uh, yeah, like, but for my fourth mile. Nice. So I started like at a Damn, seven minute. Really I'm not sure it was eight minute, but I was like maybe 750, 730, 715 or something like that. And then I got like a 630. Damn. So you're, you're, are you feeling pretty injury free? Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Did so, those treatments work? Because I know last time you're getting like injections. So right? the, the injections. So so one of the reasons I stopped drinking, besides like my my business goals, is that inflammation. Well, the inflammation and the medication that I was getting through my doctor, um, I, sh- I wasn't supposed to be uh, drinking alcohol because mm. the medication is bad for the liver and alcohol is bad for the liver. Yeah, so yeah. I stopped drinking it and I thought. It was gonna help me get even better, mm-hmm. but I started noticing that uh, it, it was supposed to be every four weeks that I'm supposed to be taking it. But I pushed my doctor, and I started to feel better with my extra supplements and stuff that I've been taking. Uh, um, I, I got better, so I was like, okay, if I stop alcohol, I'm, I'm just gonna like explode and go faster. But I, so I started pushing it to eight weeks the, the medication after like two three years I've been doing it, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be better. But the further I go close to the eight weeks, I feel like I'm breaking out like crazy. Oh, yeah. And then as soon like, uh, I noticed that last time. I was like, wait, like, well, why why am I breaking out my forehead like a little bunch of pimples? And then as soon as, as, soon as I took the medication, the Cynthia, like for rheumatoid arthritis, mm-hmm. uh, like in one or two days, oh, it went away. Ah. So I'm like, oh, okay, so there's still something. I got, I got to talk to my doctor about it. That I was like, okay, what's... Something to notice. Yeah. So yeah. That's something I'm like... And the, the issue was like when I was drinking alcohol... I, I I didn't have the no acne like <laughs> I, I, even with the extra supplements I do I, I was doing for bodybuilding and stuff, uh, like I wasn't breaking out. Yeah. But I stopped, uh, so, like stuff that you think will help you become better. Uh, but now I'm breaking out. Some some people, oh, what, what, what you taking? Medi- well, I'm not taking medication. <laughs> arthritis. Is, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, arthritis or something. I'm, like, I'm not sure. I just start breaking out like crazy in my forehead. So I'm like, last time we were talking, you were big in the bodybuild scene. How are you in that route? Uh, because of my business, I I canceled my membership that I was 
I was doing, I was like, you know what, like, um, I was taking too much time. I was uh, focusing on a lot of stuff, and that has always been me. I talked to my mentor, that guy is helping me open my own office, um, and he's like, he told me, yeah, I'm, I'm too sp- spread out, so I need to start doing yeah. less and less and less, and I've been forcing myself to just focus on, on doing specifically my financial business. Um, so I canceled the gym. Um, it, it, for my personal thing was like, it was a hard choice because it's something that I also enjoyed. Yeah. Something like the community, that gym community and stuff. And, uh, and even then the, the owner of the gym messaged me that she heard that I canceled my membership and she wished me, wished me the best. You know what yeah. I mean? Great, great owner. Uh, uh, so lo- lo- love the facility and same thing. Uh, I referred, uh, Justina Flores o- over to, to her because I called her yesterday to talk to, to see how she been and talk to her brother. Uh, See, uh, see if they can help me with with my business, uh, and then she asked me if I was still doing personal training. I was that close. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe, like, Damn, you know, maybe yeah. it's like, ah, oh, yeah, like I love coaching, but I was like, mm, no, I gotta say no. You know what I mean? It's like I need to focus on my business. It's just like I, I love the training. I like helping people. It's just it is great, but I need to build my business, have it stable. When I'm making six figures, uh, I, I told her, maybe when I'm making three hundred thousand dollars a year, uh. Then I can maybe come back to coaching, but my my like I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna come back to coaching or to the well coaching. Maybe may, uh, I'm not sure of that, but bodybuilding. Maybe when I'm making three hundred thousand, I'm gonna join the gym and do get check that thing out of my box that did a yeah a competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I said I was did gonna do. Did you ever do, do the one? Or no? no, I never got around Damn. to it. Yeah. That was the whole reason you started bodybuilding, yeah. right? You guys but yeah, if it wasn't one thing, it was another thing. My diet was crap. It's just Damn. I was spread spread too thin everywhere doing a lot yeah. of stuff. So. Like, like people believe that the hardest thing is the gym. No, the hardest thing is the damn diet. Yeah, that is the hardest yeah, thing for me too, for sure. Yeah, I'm it's like, you can put me in the gym. Like, I could go to the gym being there for two hours now. <laughs> uh, sometimes I gotta tell uh, my wife, like, let's go because we got the kids at, but with a babysitter or, or with family. But like right now, I take my what 30 minute run for four miles, come back, do an hour workout, whether it be upper body or lower body, and then leave the gym. Yeah, but that's quick and efficient. Yeah, but yeah, less distractions, less less things to to hinder me from going to my my, my next level. Because um, I went to a training. I, I did a training, and then I was uh, I was mesh, I was gonna have message a a one of my business uh, partners to motivate 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 them to come back. Because it's like those that know my story know the hardships I went I, I went through. From mm-hmm. twenty, so I joined the business in twenty thirteen, and some people that see me is like, "Well, you haven't done nothing for ten years." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Well, yeah, but you don't know my my story. Yeah. You don't know the crazy stuff I've gone through. Like, why why I had to go from one office to another office to another office, and my health issues. Why when I disappeared from social media for like two years, when uh, during my depression, during my health issues and stuff. Uh, but like I, I told John, I, I don't want to tell people my story, all kind of stuff, to because then people like my personal opinion is like. People that go around telling them their story to people is just to as an excuse to justify their stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm just gonna keep it to myself. Like the people close to me, yeah, like let's talk about it, all that kind of stuff. But I'm not over here to to give explanation. I'm just I'm ready to get to work, finish what I said I was gonna finish because I always do that. If I said yeah. I was gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, and then go from there. But saying that, I did. I, did, uh, I forgot I told. Uh, well, I, I did tell that AD and the principal that I wanted to help Escalon win a championship. Before I left Escalon, probably that's the only thing I'm not gonna be able to do because yeah. they kicked me out. Uh, not by my decision, but <clears throat> by other outside forces. But I still have the passion. I mean, help probably high school athlete uh, win state, from there jump to the collegiate level, and maybe from there go to university level. Yeah. So that, that's a maybe for coaching. Mm-hmm. If not, I'm just gonna focus on coaching financial coaches. Yeah. So just coach people that want to become financially free. It's just open yeah. office <clears throat> and because right now recently in the company somebody f- after years like the highest paid guy was five million dollars a year just but the, they the, but that guy started a business like in 1970 1980 mm. and this this couple uh from um i forgot where they came from from another from another country they immigrated over here um they started the business like in 2014 and then 10 years they built su- such a big financial business that they're making that they just cross a six million dollar mark. Damn. And then by June, I think they're gonna be at seven million. 
And then that's what I was trying to. My competitor was like, I just want to get to that stop <laughs> maybe for one freaking day. Yeah. I was <laughs> I the highest paid guy in the business and then got dropped, took it down. Damn. It's just, I was like. Where's that ego? That was my ego. <laughs> I, like, I just want to like tap and go down. Because records are meant to be broken. That, that's the mm-hmm. thing. But the fun part is get there and they get taken down. Yeah. Well, the fun part is to see how long you can maintain the yeah. thing. So, oh, so same thing with Serious High. It's insane how long I, 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 I pulled the record. Yeah, the two still? Yeah, so I, still, I still hold the for the two miles. I still hold the record, uh, and athletic that I still hold the the mile record. But nah, uh-huh. for the school records, I know, I know the school record. I think it's like a four sixteen, four eighteen mile. Damn. But for athletic that net, I hold that. The mile yeah, <laughs> nice. I'll take it. I take it. <laughs> so, but Damn. yeah, for the two mile, like I think I told you recently, with coaching again, going to different schools because I went to Houston and they have their fastest guy records up in the by the track. I think that guy ran like a nine thirty something for Houston High, and I'm like, wow, I ran a twenty nine twenty nine. Yeah, like I've, I've always been so competitive that because I'm yeah. not up there, my times didn't mean crap crap to me. Mm-hmm. But once I'm lo- looking back, I'm like, wow, I was fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I was somebody. Yeah. But the whole time I was like, I still need to be that. I still need to get there. It's funny because like, on the last podcast, you were like, you were like, did you guys like the team aspect more, or did you like? actually enjoy the running and i said both mm. and you were like the running is crap <laughs> and you like the team aspect <laughs> the team was but it's just like whoa. mind-blowing to me because well, it's not it's not it's not out of the running like when you gotta do 400 repeats you guys know the speed yeah, that's workout, awful yeah that's awful that, <laughs> that's where I like, like, oh i like the running like well the jogging <laughs> yeah. the jogging because with like this, the cool downs. Well, yeah with, with the cool downs the warm-ups maybe <laughs> but the workouts were just brutal. Yeah. And that's what... I remember, brutal d- when during the when warm-ups, I'd have anxiety about the <laughs> fucking workout coming. I'm like, dude, I know it's going to hurt so bad. Yeah. I remember sucking because I, I was getting so slow at points where I would just... I wouldn't even finish the 400 and I had to start out. Like, I'm just basically like... I'm just running. I'm just running, <laughs> running the fast rank. at this point, dude. I was like yeah, so I, I freaking I think that's... Um, that's another thing I think Cuevas had me have the kids do once. So I had you guys do a 400 every two minutes mm-hmm. yeah that, that was the rule if you couldn't do it just drop out and then jump jump back in if you was running slow but then in the beginning of the season he had me have them what was it like one every minute and a half or something like that every Faster? minute and a half no every minute uh, two minutes and a half two minutes, uh, and a half. Okay, two minutes yeah. And a half. seconds yeah it was two minutes and a half. So one every two break. minutes i'm like seriously i'm like yeah. what happened with like well when i was a junior or senior in high school i was doing the one every two minutes. Yeah. So, but then I'm like, okay, maybe I was that fast. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But for him to come over here and start coaching these guys a little bit slower, which when you're building a program, that's how you start. You start. I think when I went to Del High, I went a little bit easier than what I did with you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, how did that work out? Well, COVID retired me. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> COVID. Yeah, COVID. obstacles. Yeah, co- yeah, yeah, COVID, man, is just retarded me. I'm like, I got hired there on the spot because of my background. Um, but yeah, COVID was just, just like okay, time time to take my I'm okay, perfect. So and I didn't have no serious runners down there, so I was like, you know what? Like I'm done. I'm, I'm not. I'm not coming back. Yeah. So I focus on my business. Well, take it. I focus on my wife. So I focus because uh, my wife was there through my depression, through my whole situation. She, well, when somebody's going through depression, the marriage is not perfect. It just struggles. And then once we looked back, she was saying that I hit depression when she had our second son. Or our first son, uh, our second child. And I was less helpful during that time. And she didn't know I was going through depression. She didn't know I was having sui- uh, suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, so now when she looks back, it's like, oh, she, she feels guilty. But I don't feel it. I mean, it's all suicide, all people thinking about suicide or depression keep it to themselves. Yeah. That, that's how it is. Um, who the hell would that uh, Rubio? You know what I mean? Uh, I was uh, thinking about that the other day. That, that, that one hit me so hard when Clarissa told me. But then I just shook it off. I was like, because I'm like, you know what? Like, no, nah, it was just, but that, that was the one hit me because he was such a happy guy. It was just great. Yeah, it's always great just kid. crazy when it's unexpected. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that was the thing that kept, kept me going. I was like, you know what? I, I, I ain't going like that. You know what I mean? It's just, I always have standards for myself. But she had a hard time racing our second because I wasn't there. Uh, I got to a point where I, I I'm not sure I went through the pocket last time, that I couldn't walk where I had to have a container next to my bed so I can urinate because I couldn't. Oh, it was shit. so hard for me to get up. And technically, it's just going around the corner. Like, leaving leave the room, the bathroom is, is right there. But I, I couldn't even do that. 
So because uh, of your like foot injury, yeah, my right? my ankles, my oh. knees, everything was hurting. Just oh, every fuck, step was stepping yeah. like a nail. So it's just it was it was painful. So, but she was supportive there. She was. Uh, I went through some uh, drinking cycles of the depression, trying to uh, use painkillers plus alcohol to to make the day. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But she was there. So when I got better, and I didn't, I wasn't coaching that no more. I spoiled her. I just, we just traveled, did different stuff, uh, enjoyed each other's company. Yeah. So for about two years, and then finally I was like, you know what? I gotta get back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get back to work. Yeah. And as soon the thing, as soon as it, we're, like for in December or November, we started making plans for the new year. Like we're gonna focus on the biz. We're gonna do this, and then I think in the beginning of the year, I think in January, Cuevas contacts me that he wants me to coach. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and then he tells like he tells me his situation or this or that. I'm like, oh, should I, should I, should I? Like, <laughs> like I wanted to get back to coaching, but I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, should yeah. I? I'm like, I, I said I was gonna focus on my business, but I'm like, you know what? Like. I can multitask. I can focus on my business <laughs> and maybe help people out and escort yeah. and stuff like uh, to do the poor things that I'm supposed to be doing. But that, that didn't go too well. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I told, I told uh, my wife just maybe just God signed that like, hey, I told you to focus on this <laughs> and you're over here play footies with coaching. <laughs> so, but I don't know. It's just, but it's whole different uh, experience. But yeah wife went through some crazy stuff so i decided to spoil her for a couple nice couple of years you guys have been yeah. together now what like 15 years 10 years so next month we're gonna be married for 10 years damn yeah, nice. we got, you're 30 you're gonna turn are you 33 yeah 33 i'm gonna turn 34 in december on the pod you were saying you started coaching us when you were 25 and chris is yeah. about to be 25 isn't that That's crazy fucking crazy yeah he could be he could, yeah, he's, this, he could he's gonna to go be the coach. same age <laughs> yeah, i would love to coach i just feel like i don't have enough time at hey, this point mate, your way they, they will hire you ask <laughs> <laughs> <For real? laughs> i gotta get canceled for that uh, <laughs> yeah. i think uh what's cool too is like at least you having having you as a coach and like realizing how important coaching is like, oh, I, maybe Beeman is a distance coach. I can give you the workouts. You can go coach I, Enox. Yeah. Yeah, his dad was telling me at one of the track meets at Escalon that his distance coach, re, like, left, like, two weeks into the start of the season. Oh, damn. Yeah. What the so, heck? So, uh, Enox may have not had a Yeah, I'm a coach alumni, over. so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> and then same thing, like, I, I tell people, I think, I was saying, uh, just saying, like, hey, if you, if you need a workout plan for personal training i will give it to you but i don't have time to yeah to yeah. spend time coaching or train you same thing is just uh flavio cash or something telling me hey when i get coaching i want you to give me the workouts i'm like yeah man you can have them he's but, gonna coach flavio? yeah flavio oh, wants to nice. coach. how's he doing good good he just got his bachelor's degree for history he, he he's gonna go back to school to get his master's but he's doing substitute teaching uh he has his daughter right now he's having so much fun with his daughter Cool. Um, but yeah, he's mm -hmm. he's trying to be a a history teacher and then oh, nice. also coach. Did he get Did he get bigger? What do you mean bigger? I don't know. Just because we all got fatter in life. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, there you go. It was like bigger, like muscular, or bigger, like bod daddy. Yeah, he he has a daddy bod. Damn, yeah. he was hella fit. Happens when, to the best of us. Yeah, Damn. he's fit. No, you know, the thing is, like, it happens to the best of us. But I gave him the heads up, like, bro, you gotta work out because you're gonna get fat. I got fat when <laughs> I, I had my first kid. Yeah. Said, well, yeah. I think during the whole time I was still injured. Did uh, you get? Did you gain weight when you got like first started dating your wife? No, she did. Damn. So <laughs> I, I gained weight like both relationships I've been in. I gain weight within the first like you know five months or whatever. It's just like all we do is how, fucking. How much eat. do you weigh right now? I think last. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing I find funny. Like that, the times I'm running, I'm like, I'm a big tank. <laughs> you can feel it, like. Well, no, no, it's not. I can feel it. I, I weighed myself. I think last time I weighed like 185. Fuck. And Damn. for me to big be boy. running like a 630, uh, that yeah. way I'm like, I yeah. am freaking moving. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Imagine like, at one. Imagine at 160. You know how that feel. Yes. So <laughs> I'm not sure the weight wants me that low, <laughs> but I just need to eat enough protein so I can just shed any fat, which I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much, but probably. I, I, yeah, one of my goals is to try to get abs. I never had abs. <laughs> Same. Yeah. I never had Well, that abs. one selfie you had, I don't know if you remember. It's like oh, a mirror long selfie hair? and you have oh, long, long hair. hair. You can see some, yeah, some on the see. sides a little <laughs> bit. But, but like, well, but nothing crazy. Yeah, but I never I already had a little belly down here. Like mm -hmm. nothing like. That's just hard. Me solid. too. Even in like yeah. the best shape of my life in high school, like running. Yeah, man. Still had that little belly at the bottom. Like, fuck. Who's the ones that had the abs? Brandon, Ryan. 
I remember Nathan had abs, like naturally. Nathan, He's yeah. just so skinny. Yeah, I think it was Nathan. Was like Probably Andrew by the end. Andrew, maybe. Eh. Andrew was losing his abs from wrestling to running. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was just, but, but that, that would be. I had it a couple times. <laughs> my goals, but they just think maybe just pudgy. running. You know what I mean? Well, if you gain weight, because you weren't working out. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, when you think back, but when <laughs> I was dating my wife in college, we were both runners. Yeah, and I think we were, she, she was running, but she was still eat, gaining weight. So Damn. she gained weight when she was competing, but it's because <laughs> I would eat late. I'm I'm one of those guys that wakes up at two in the morning, goes to the fridge, eat something, go back. to They sleep. say that like you gain weight easier when you eat before you go to sleep. God. There's yeah, some there's, science yeah. behind it. I forget the exact science, but I don't know. But my my theory is like calories in, calories out. Yeah. If you burn more calories throughout the day than what you're taking in, you you're gonna yeah be skinny. Do you track that right now or no? Just on, what the mileage? No, the, the calories. No, no, nothing. I I just make sure only it, bodybuilding. You did yeah. that right? Probably not even. <laughs> so <laughs> what I tried to cover when when, when I was bulking. Uh, I tried to keep track of it, but I, I always was slow. I still got. I, I was trying to hit 200 pounds. I'm not sure if I told you guys oh, last time. I was trying to hit damn. 200 pounds. That's awful. Imagine you did that and you stopped bodybuilding and you're just 200 pounds. That was the scary part. <laughs> you just stuck at 200 <laughs> you, pounds. You stuck at 200 pounds and then you keep going up. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was like, hell. <laughs> but, but I think when, when, I st- when I talked to a bodybuilder coach in downtown Modesto, he literally called me, bro, yeah, like, you bulked, like you did a bulk thing, but you're fat. I'm like, wow. I was wake up, but like, you're fat. I'm like, okay. Thank you. Th- thanks for the honesty. I, l- I love it. Yeah. So that's what I got serious. And I was okay. Well, I didn't hit that 200, but I think I hit like 199.6. Fuck. So I was like, I, I can't say that. Uh, uh, for my personal thing, there's a bragging thing that you say. You can say I hit 200 pounds. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And then I lost it, but I can't even say I hit 200 pounds. I hit Fuck. 199.6. But then I started cutting down. I think I got down to maybe like 170 in one of my thing that you guys sh- sh- shared some of the pictures where. The gym where I was the most cut. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, when you're working out a lot. Yeah, but I think that was I was getting ready for last year's EDC. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but going to EDC, I, I thought I was going to be looking good. There's some dudes who were shredded. All those guys, yeah, yeah, all yeah, those guys there, that's okay. the trend now. Is like yeah. If you're fitness, if you're fit and you go there, like everyone's there is fit. Yeah. 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 Everyone's shredded. Yeah, yeah. You, you have from the biggest people to the shreddest guy. So... Like EDC just even set everybody out. Yeah. 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 So unless you you're one of those fittest guys and you have a big ego, it's just yeah. power to you. But, <laughs> but you were in was, the middle. Yeah. I, I was. Yeah. Well, I was in the middle. I was more in the twenty <laughs> percent. Yeah. There you go. So, but yeah. that was fun. But it, it it was a good experience. And then after that, I was like, you know what? Let let me focus on uh, the business because I was just I just been slacking. I I've been slacking. Yeah. I gotta do that and then. The company emailed me that qualified to do mortgage loans, nice. so I decided to get that out of the way. So getting waiting for our fast service California system <laughs> to give me my demo license. Yeah. yeah, they told me it would take me thirty to sixty days. Ah, shit. So I'm still waiting. So <laughs> whenever, whenever we buy a house, do you know? Yeah. So no, this economy, fuck. <laughs> I, I actually saw. Well, you know, you guys are what Gen Z? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, that's yeah. one that posted my way up here. Uh, <clears throat> millennials waiting for the uh, for the crash. Yeah, the yeah. market like just crash. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. So, millions are just waiting for the yeah, please like, <laughs> waiting for that damn crash. But I'm like, but at, at this point, it's just yeah, that, that, that's another rubble hole theories, conspiracies. How the market's being all bought out. BlackRock is buying all the houses and renting them out. And yeah, that's goes, crazy. What I've seen a lot is that uh, all those big corporations are just buying every house and then just they own it. <laughs> you yeah. know, but then but then it comes down to a basic thing. But because I'm in the financial field. Like a, a business mindset, I think different than the common person that is just an employee mindset. Yeah. So, but if you wanna buy a house with today's technology, like you guys doing podcasts and all that kind of stuff, um, you guys can explode from one day to another and be millionaires. Mm-hmm. So that's the possibility. It's just money comes is run, running around so much yeah. for the investment side of the of the industry, uh, for the insurance industry. There's trillions of dollars. That people need to invest the baby boomers are retiring so that that's where a lot of my market will be at to to move money around help people invest their money and you can become a millionaire just doing that kind of stuff just helping people mm-hmm. with their yeah. financial needs and buying houses all this kind of stuff so but the financial industry is great but if you 
like like the people, like and and I learned to love the financial thing because I'm at the investments and the passion. I'm like people do need the services because everybody's in debt. Uh, but the main thing in life is to do the things that you love in life. And I learned that finances and fitness are the two things that everybody needs. Yeah. Everybody needs to have good finances to ha- have a happy marriage, have happy children, because over fifty percent divorces happen because of financial problems. Mm-hmm. Everybody divorces because issues with finances. So if I can help people with like you know that's because that, that connects with coaching. Uh, I told you if I can help couples or parents with their finances, their their children will have a better successful life when it comes to sports and school, and then that will be a future generation. Mm-hmm. So you gotta help mm-hmm. families. Uh, core core families with their finances and then they'll be better and then they can focus on fitness and health and fitness and health we also need that for for life yeah so finances and fitness so just, i was able to connect those together but that's my passion you guys are passionate nice. two f's ff <laughs> all right i was uh, watching <clears throat> i was watching this documentary last night her name's diana nyad she's a swimmer and she's she broke like all these or she she did all these things for the first time like she swam around i think manhattan like or uh like the new york kind of area but she would swim for like like days at a time and she she was the first person to swim from cuba to florida and it was like two or three days of her just swimming like straight (coughs) and it reminded me of you a lot (laughs) just because of like the ego and just the fucking like she was just the gnarly, and she was human spirit. Yeah, <laughs> the spirit, just the drive. She was sixty-four years old too when she wow, did it. When she shit. swam, like she had retired already, and she had yeah. stopped swimming for like decades. And then she came back, like all of a sudden. She, she was said, like, "I'm sixty-four. If I drown, I'm happy." <laughs> yeah, dude, it was gnarly. <laughs> it took there. her five tries to do it, like yeah. five different well, times. Well, even then, like yeah. So the, there's a challenge. You 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 go, but you always have a boat. Yeah, they had a boat there just yeah. in case, like with the doctor and stuff. So. And she got stung by a jellyfish, like oh, yeah, that, that, I think yeah, like that, three of the times yeah. on her face too. And it was like the like one of the worst jellyfish, I guess, in the world. And she almost died at one point, like on the boat. Like they had oxygen on her and shit. Yeah, they and, like, they, they, they had an epipen. I didn't know she was six, sixty four. Gnarly, I I dude. One. It was so gnarly. So she finally did it. So she yeah. Made it. Wow, nice. But but those are things like what's the point of going through life just being safe, going to your job, coming. That's what she says. She's like. Like she just likes like the un like breaking those barriers, you know. Like I like so, I'm a, a adrenaline junkie, but not too extreme. Because mm. if you tell me to jump off a freaking airplane, I'm like, mm, nah. Yeah, same. <laughs> <here. laughs> like, my my wife is like, oh, we should go jump out. Like, no, yeah, <coughs> no, it's just I, yeah. there's crazy stuff. Like, say the same thing with a uh, with the ocean because I had too close uh drowning experience when I was younger. Jesus, Damn. um, just because I think one time I went to a pier. Uh, in Washington, we went to go visit family in Washington, and I and that's how I pier. I was like, oh, I can swim from this pier to that pier. Oh, so I started shit. swimming, and maybe a quarter in, I noticed that uh, I was going against the current. Oh. So I'm like, oh, this is gonna be hard. But I said, oh, the, the, there's little balloons floating that I can just if I get tired, I can hang on to them. So so I got halfway to them lake. I was like, okay, let, let me let me uh, or the piers. Uh, let me hold on from from one and <clears> rest. <throat> As soon as I grabbed it, that damn thing sink. Uh, that was a wake up call. Was like you're like fuck, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm How fucked. old were you? I was I was maybe like 16, 16, damn. 17. So when I went up there for that, so it's something like that. So so I was fit because of running. When so, we were in Mammoth like a few years ago, we did like this really long hike up mm-hmm. to like this lake, and the lake was like freezing cold. And Jaime swam across it. And he was high, too. <laughs> and, dude, I was scared. Because, like, I was just like, I could do it. Like, I, I like swimming. I feel like I'm good at my swimming abilities. And we had just hiked. And I was going. It was really cold. It was, like, freezing. Yeah, freezing. <laughs> and cold. I was going. I was going. I remember, like, halfway through, I was like, <laughs> holy hell. Like, I'm really tired. You know? And I, I haven't pushed myself like that in swimming. You know? Yeah. Like, that's a scary thought. Because you, you get a cramp and you're, you know, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I was just like, well, I can't stop now. So, like, I just swam, like, slow, like, the whole thing. Because if I stopped, I would have just been like, yeah. oh, you know? Yeah. And I made it, and I remember, like, just gasping, like, the, when I got there. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I was just so exhausted. <laughs> that, that's, and, that's like, what, I was worried. Yeah. yeah that, that, that was me. I think my dad, he, he, said, he told me he saw me, but he, there's nothing he could do. Yeah, you uh, can't do it. Well, yeah. Like, they're not going to go yeah. and swim and yeah, He said, like, I was already halfway, and so I told him, I got to make it to that to the pier. So. Which I, I don't know why they didn't go back yeah. and ran with a current, current but yeah. I pushed through it, 
when I got to the pier, I just like dragged myself so oh, hard. There was people fuck. around, but they were like, they didn't, no, no help. It was, I was just yeah. like dragged myself and just lay there for like five <laughs> minutes. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I was. I was just yeah, like, well, like in the sun, like oh, I was happy yeah. to be alive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and that was my experience with water. I was like, respect water. I'm like, I'm. Dude, the ocean especially yeah. will fuck you up. Yeah. Like, the waves and the currents. Yeah, man. when people say, oh, let's, let's go in the yard. Let's go to, let's go in the bum. I'm like, fuck that. No. <laughs> I, 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 I will go hiking. I, I can go hike. I, I, I have more confidence on fighting a damn bear yeah. than <laughs> trying to swim. Yeah. And so. honestly, that's probably more likely. You know, that's probably true. You could probably beat a bear more oh, likely yeah, than you could beat the ocean. You know? Yeah. Mountain, mm-hmm. give, give me a mountain. Give me anything up in the mountains. <laughs> but that ocean, like... <laughs> Even First of if all, you break your leg in the hiking, like you'll be fine. Yeah. If you hurt your leg or anything at cramp in the ocean, the ocean like you're just drowning. You start out. drowning. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, no, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool at water. Just, so I I will get in the water. I mean, it's just I go to the ocean. I, I like I like water. So it's like it's fun, but there's a limit. I'm like, oh, we're gonna be in the ocean for for a month. I'm like, mm. <laughs> when was the last time you've iced or like done anything like that? Have the you iced, iced the ice bath? Like, you mean? Or just yeah, anything for like um, uh, relief? I can't remember if I I so. Uh, so I was in charge of bringing the ice bucket for the, for the Escalon kids. Mm. So I want to think that I may have iced with them, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, did you guys use a trash can like we did? No, I, no, they had a, one of those uh, things for, of course they did. Well, <laughs> I had to borrow the full players. Um, <laughs> like a tub kind of thing. Yeah. The, the, the little containers that put uh, food for the animals for. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Aluminum yeah, ones. It's so much better than what we oh, had. Oh, hell yeah. We just had a well, well the option ass. they gave me at first was the garbage cans. They uh, told me that the previous years they used garbage cans. But I asked the the AD if I could use those. He said, yeah. So I'm like, okay. Because they're oh, not nice. using it at the same time, yeah. right? So it's like, it's so, fine. But nice. that, that's what I was doing. But I did use it. I think I, I did jump in once to prove my guys. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Like, the girls were ha- handling them better than the guys. The guys were just screaming really? and whining and... <laughs> Shivering. Oh my guys. I think it was bad at first, but I remember loving it at one point, being like, I want to get in there. Yeah, after the second, third try, minutes, you get used minutes. to it. And that's what's yeah. up, guys. You got to get, like, give it two, three tries, and then you get used to it. And then you go around and then you move the yeah. ice. Fuck, <laughs> oh, like, oh. dude. That's the worst. I forgot I used to do yeah, that. I, I, still, I still did it with this guy over here. I'm like, you guys, you got to move your legs because you yeah. build that little bubble. Even yeah, I do that. Like, if I, back when I used to freaking try to do that stuff, I'd, like, move because I'd be like, I can't just stand still yeah. in the cold, you know? Yeah. That swimmer, um, she came from, like, she talked about her childhood a lot, too. And she had gotten, like, uh, like molested and, like, raped and stuff. And she had mentioned that, like, later when she was trying the Cuba to Florida thing. She was, like, I feel like, like, a lot of athletes, they're fueled by, like, the pain that they have from, like, you know, the struggles they've been through and stuff. What do you think about that? I do agree. It comes down to, I think I had another... I was talking to a, a, another friend recently with doing uh, business phone calls. I follow up with him. Uh, he was 320 pounds, 300 and something pounds. He got surgery. Uh, that's what makes some of the oh, lower. Yeah, yeah. So he said he got a lot of support when he was dro- dropping weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he dropped the first 100 pounds, he, he got support. He dropped like a total of 214 pounds. Damn. Uh, the first 100 people were supportive. After the 100, like uh, psychologically, there's some people that are going to support you naturally. There's some people that are going to tell you you should stop and because you're, you're looking weak he, he, he told me that they started saying oh yeah you look you look weak you look uh, not healthy this and that or that mm-hmm. uh, some people do it for because they care about you and there's some people that would just hate they're trying to yeah. discourage you because now you're looking better than them so um he started dropping that way and he ignored it uh, but he did tell me that he went through suicidal thoughts as well just depression all kind of stuff because yeah. of the thing but once you hit that dark point like this lady when you hit rock bottom when you've been to the worst thing everything else on top is just you try to see the beauty on it yeah and with her i do see like um same thing with the ice man you guys seen the ice man like that, that gets into ice and wim hof what wim hof ice man hof i think his name is yeah the old guy he just yeah walks the beard bare, and yeah like, yeah same thing his uh family got killed or something like that oh really so he got killed Damn. like he lost his the weapon daughter, I believe it, it, it was a situation, and he used to get into the eyes to numb the pain. Uh. So, and uh, there's a lot of scenarios like that when, when, when you have that darkness inside, you try just <laughs> to do exercise or any of that kind of stuff just to, to prove. Mm-hmm. And so, so there's some athletes that are able to come out of it, but then uh, I, I know there's been some athletes that have achieved great stuff but have never gotten over. Their bad experience that then they 
kill themselves. Yeah. So, but some of the successful people are, they have that, but it's not just limited to that because then you have people that. Like rich kids. Rich just, kids that yeah, have always been raised perfectly and stuff. And like they just have the money and the resources to, yeah. to achieve that, the level. But I do believe that. So it's like this lady. Yeah. Like, there's something that fuels you. Even David yeah. Goggins, like his his upbringing was awful, you know. Yeah, like he had a very abusive, I think, dad, or and at least abusive to his his mom, yeah. and all this crazy stuff, <clears throat> and like racism and everything, where he was from, and I mean, fuck, I'm sure that fueled him for a while, you know. There's a lot of fighters too, right? From like, I, feel like every I mean, time, there's like so Nate, many Nate, fighters. Nate and, Dick, <laughs> Nate and Nick Diaz. They're yeah, I was even thinking that. Hey, mainly the fighters, man. I was thinking yeah. of fighters from like the Middle East and stuff like that, you know. Like uh, what's his name? The one you were just talking about on the pod, Miss Agamen. No, the oh, guy Nur- that crossed Nurmaga the desert. Medov. Nurmaga Medov? Khabib Nurmagomedov. There's a guy that tried to cross the desert like multiple times to get from somewhere in the Middle East. God damn it! Yeah. You're just talking I talked about, about it. it? Yeah. Like, you remember? I'm gonna use you listen to a podcast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to a podcast. You were like, oh. Oh, Francis Ngannou. Yeah, Francis Ngannou. Oh, Francis. That guy. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what that, too? It's crazy. I, yeah. I, it was uh, I, I think it wasn't Middle East. I think he, well, I think it's Africa. I think it was Africa. Yeah, and he's trying to get to Morocco or something, right? I believe something like that. And they kept sending him back, and like, I guess when they send him back, they just put him like in the middle of the desert. You have to like fucking find his way back to like. I no, I, I heard this on a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> no. I was like, wow. Dude, yeah. you should watch that fucking podcast. With Dude, I've been running though. Let me show you my new running shoes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw one with the picture. It's okay. <laughs> Dude, they're so sick. This is pretty cool, right? They're so clean. I got not an ad, by the way, but I've always ran an ASICs, and I was looking at like this TikToker guy. He's on a 900 day run streak, by the way. This guy's right. watching, and uh, this is like one of his go to shoes. And I was like, fuck, I like ASICs, so let me try these ones. You know, how much are, were they? Dude, running shoes are so fucking expensive now. It's yeah. insane. Running shoes uh, are usually like 160, 180. I think I got these for like 95. What do you mean? I spent like 70 bucks. On what sh- what shoes did you get? Uh, I think I got some Azunas recently. Really? But uh, like I told you guys, you guys got to buy the old versions. I nah. do. I still do that. I, I spent like a few days trying to buy shoes online, like looking at all the older versions and stuff. I didn't really find any. Like, this one was only 95. Not that bad, though. That's pretty expensive. Yeah, but I remember in high school, I would get some for like 50 or 40 even. Well, maybe, we're like going 16. from... How, how many years have you been from high school? Six? Yeah, that was Seven. like 2017. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so some corporations use COVID to increase prices on everything. It's just fucking yeah. economy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if, you, if you're talking about 50, because I, th- I got mine for like 70. I had to really go through MSL and some other pages <laughs> until I find some. Yeah. But prices are going up. So inflation, all kind of stuff makes sense. It's just an extra 20. 20 bucks more will have been make sense, which that's what I got mine for 20, like 70 bucks. But mm. an extra 40. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. Damn. Yeah. You, you better be overpaid. Or hundreds. Like yeah. When you get into. Yeah. If you get the newest ones, they're like 160 oh, bucks. Like, are you fucking serious? And like, like, they they try to get you with like the science behind it, this and this, this. and I'm like, it's not that much different. It's like an Apple phone. It's like it's not that much. Yeah. Different. How much more can you improve in some damn running shoes? <laughs> yeah. Either they're light, they're medium, or they're heavy. I mean, for long distance, for like ultra marathons. Yeah. And uh, what was the big soul ones that you, you guys used to wear hokas the hokas those are for like ultra runs and shit yeah like, i'm like nah and, and for me to wear them for my regular days they're not too pretty so i'm like nah i'm not, I'm not touching those <laughs> I'm, yeah like when you guys were using those like guys those are if you are running 100 miles a week mm. no point to waste that amount of money yeah but you guys they're got comfy though you yeah. know you guys were spoiled and parent <laughs> hey, i money. stay i stayed in a6 a6 <coughs> my life. yeah so i think my wife got, was a big hoka guy yeah, he was the Oscar, first one, and then I think a- Brandon, now Andrew yeah, does Hoka. I think um, I understood. Did, did I ever get you guys into Mizunos? I think I, I, tried. I had a pair of Mizunos, yeah. the Wave Riders. I yeah, like those ones riders, a lot. Yeah. So they're, <coughs> they're 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 weird. They're hard but soft. Yeah, they're, they're I like them a lot. They're somewhat like more cushiony. I think the hookahs were more cushiony, mm-hmm. but those give you more stability. Oh, okay. So that's, that's the thing I liked about them. But sometimes I think somebody tried them and their feet just didn't like them. But mm. just based on your feet as well. I think we talked about that. that. So why well, some people got injured. Have you seen, um, I've been seeing recently, like, I think they're called like barefoot running shoes. It's not oh, the yeah. ones where like you can see the like toes. It's like they're just really wide shoes and they let your toes like spread out more. Because apparently that's like 
I'm be- starting to learn now like that. Pointed, like- yeah, and your toes are like crunched together. That's so, apparently like kind of unhealthy and causes issues. Oh yeah, it's pretty now much they like, have like yeah, when wide. I told you guys about the, um, um <laughs> what was it called? When I make you guys run barefoot, it was because of that. Because our shoes, ba- uh, <coughs> weaken our feet because we tie them up nice and tight. Yeah, and it makes our our muscles weaker. Which once you make your 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 bottom of your feet weak, it transfers over your biomechanics, change from your uh, ankles to your knee, from your knee to your hip, and it messes up the whole uh, kinetics to it. There's a reason why the canyons run faster. Same thing mm. uh, right now. There's a the Raramuri people from Mexico. There's a girls that ran, I think four girls just whooped the whole ultra marathon. I saw that, right? Yeah, some Mexican girls. And same thing, the a Mexican guy uh, won the Ironman, I think, recently. I saw oh, that one really? too. Yeah, that one. He's like doing like a bunch of, there's a crazy ass stats. Yeah. So. I know there's some place in Mexico that's like similar to Kenya in elevation. And, uh, yeah, I think that's where the rare moon <coughs> people are. It's the mountains, the stretch of mountains that go yeah, through. I what it's called. It's rare. Like sometimes people get lost in there. So they, oh, shit. They, yeah, you need to get some people that know that, the yeah. terrains. But that, that's how they run those people. Healthy food and same thing. I think um, Nike tried to give some of these uh, girls. Uh, Nike shoes and she rejected them. She's like, no. Oh. Like this girl actually ran with flip flops. Yeah, really? yeah, I think I yeah, saw that. Just flip flops. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking insane. But it's because her feet are so strong. They they've been doing this since they were young. Just and I, and I, and I let my boy walk barefoot whenever he wants. Yeah. Uh, because it just strengthens the whole chemistry. And I think the same thing with the shoes. Uh, they're promoting it for uh, infants, infants, toddlers, and stuff mm. to let your feet spread out because you're always yeah. like this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then your arch drops, and it does a bunch of different issues. So if you, if you can just walk barefoot, all kind of stuff, it's good. Um, I do believe on the idea of some uh, the Hispanic community says like don't walk on cold floor like tile because that uh. transfers cold into your feet. I I, I agree on that. Uh, so you wear socks when or flip flops when we are doing that, but flip flops are better than tight shoes. Tension yeah, and stuff because yeah, just we can the whole feet. But if you can walk barefoot in the grass and the dirt, all that kind of stuff, I think it does has its benefits from um, balancing your your what's called electricity. Mm-hmm. Like so, your nervous system. Kind yeah, of? The nervous system. So when when you walk barefoot in, in the grass, it balances you based on the time zone that you're in. So I, I saw a video where I forgot what what famous guy did it. He traveled to Europe. And as soon as he got out of the airplane, he went to the grass, took off his feet, and started walking in the in the grass to let his nervous system know that he's in a different uh, part of the of the world. Yeah, Cause it is the magnetic field. So bal- balancing your yeah, ma- the mag- magnetic yeah, field, the magnetic field in your body. So in this part of it too is just another thing that Quavo will make us get in. Uh, he will come and get in a make a hole in the ground, uh, just dirt, and then fill it up with water and make it like muddy water and just lay electrolytes just going and de- de- detoxifying through your feet yeah so but all that stuff is natural eastern medication stuff that uh everybody knows i think i was watching the movie last night about the uh, gray wall of china and that, have, have you seen that thing the gray wall how big it is i've heard of like statistics like how long it is yeah the fuck is it's bigger like than, insanely it's long. bigger than like, the united states twice as big yeah, it's twice as big as the United States. <coughs> it took them, Crazy. I think, seventeen hundred. I think the, this movie I saw from nineteen uh, twenty sixteen said it took them seventeen hundred years to finish it. And the question is, why were they building it? Why were they trying to protect themselves from? Mm-hmm. The, the, this movie talks about like monsters and stuff. I'm like, okay, whatever. Oh, uh, <laughs> is that the one with Matt Damon? Who's Matt Damon? Is it the actor? So, <laughs> so there's two two guys that end up uh, show me a picture fighting. It's in Netflix. It's on Netflix, right? The Great Wall. Yeah, the, yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. That, that guy. Uh, so like there was a that. Hispanic guy with <laughs> a white boy, and then the other guy that came on uh, Spider Man. It's funny that I have Matt Damon, the white guy, as the lead, though. <laughs> oh, okay. We just yeah. had a guy on. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they got, what is it? Jet Lee, right? We just had a guest on the Defoe? pod, I think, last week. Better and he guy. went to um, Peru and he did ayahuasca oh, okay, ceremonies. Okay. And like we asked him to describe what it was, and he was like, "Well, like Western people describe ayahuasca as a drug, but he's like, you know, Eastern like medicine describes it as medicine, not as a drug." I'm like, "Yeah, it's interesting, so, you know, how the difference is between." Yeah, it's just um, <coughs> the Western medication 
it's a big history. Right? Like I think I talked to you guys that I'm a big history guy. Um, everything started with the Rockefellers. Mm-hmm. So the Western medication aspect, like we used to have natural remedies, plants, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Once a Rockefeller, uh, he owned a lot of the companies for oil, and once the government broke apart his monopoly, <coughs> he managed to get payback on the United States for breaking up his monopoly. Yeah. Which the Rockefeller, if you know his uh, background, he started. He almost lost everything. He almost he, like he was in a small little house. He he was broke. He was almost, uh, yeah. Like I think I'm, I can remember he had a sick wa- a sick daughter, sick children. But he was he fought like until he finally hit oil, and from there he got a measure of greedy. But he was one of the big guys that that exploded the United States economy. But uh, once they the United States uh, disassembled his monopoly, he venture uh, he 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 wants to get revenge so he started funding a lot of the universities mm. uh pushing a lot of money into the universities so they can use uh make medication off oil so so, uh. so some of the medication that we do is like oil based yeah which is bad for our body yeah so and then like all these big companies or these corp- corporations have hijacked the western medication and is just that kind of stuff so the eastern medication cures you they find remedies to cure you the western medication is just, just it numbs you yeah it numbs say. you it's just and it's the same thing is just <coughs> uh, at one point it's like okay sh- should i fight it or what what should i do because the, the same thing i got i got taken out because I, I i um <coughs> i shared my experience with psychedelics and how it helped me for depression but it, i got taken out because of the stigma that the yeah. western side has in that medication aspect about it but if you go to eastern japan or that kind of areas they see it as something that actually helps you. Yeah. So I think, I think even Mexico, I think Mexicans actually recognize it as a <coughs> m- medical aspect. Psychedelics mm-hmm. and acid and all kind of stuff got got a big stigma and it got put as a, a level one drug during the Black Panthers riots because all the hippies or the Black Panthers all those yeah. guys used to use those kind of drugs. So the government made those drugs look bad when the science was behind it. The mm-hmm. CIA was using uh, acid, all kind of stuff to study for depression, how to control yeah. people, uh, military and stuff. And they were getting good results. But then they decided to to make it look bad so they can discredit the Black Panthers and all those uh, hippie movements that were going against yeah. the, the Korean or Vietnam Wars. Yeah, Vietnam so that's the, that's the only <laughs> reason why, or one of the reasons that these drugs have such a bad stigma yeah because the government was yeah. scared that like the people yeah, were gonna the, end up like rebelling too much yeah because they, they were opening their their eyes they, they were yeah. seeing past the control the truth yeah the truth so the government had to ban it so <laughs> they're so good at controlling everything you know so but hey we're still we're still in the land of the free so <laughs> people can complain all the all the freaking want about the united states or this and that but go somewhere else yeah I, i'm like i dare you to go somewhere else. I, I think i, I i've been hearing again I think from when Trump won last time, uh, last election, a lot of people were saying they were going to leave the country. Only mm-hmm. one freaking famous people did it. Yeah. Everybody else bitched out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And again, we got a lot of freaking people saying, if Donald Trump wins again, we're going to leave the country. Mm-hmm. I was like, I fucking dare you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, I, I saw one of your podcasts where you guys are talking about kind of stuff. But um, the sign, like well, once, you, once you're on the business side and stuff, like, I find it so funny how they try to indict Trump so many times, and it makes me more makes him more famous. Mm-hmm. But it's because how corrupt the the, the system is. Mm-hmm. Is just I used to be a Democrat. I used to be a Democrat. Mm-hmm. But once COVID hit and all kind of stuff, and I started seeing the how mainstream media flipped everything. Because I was against Trump at first because of the racist aspects and stuff. But once I actually saw the full videos, this motherfucker picked and choose little clips to make him look bad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. once you actually see him and see all the support that he has for, from the black community the hispanic community every freaking community is like god damn it they, they, they got me i think i'm always surprised when i see like mexican people like pro-trump you know oh, like man. super republican like so, oh wow so uh, at this point my dad was against trump my mom <clears throat> uh, as well i was uh since uh since I, I got my information i did my research from, from the beginning because I, I was democrat um i got my because I, I think Obama, Obama. I think first term I was pro Obama. Second term, I was like, "This fucker fucked us." Because <laughs> like he promised so many things. Make Cuban cigars illegal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's only positive. Now. <laughs> like 
he promised so many things for the Hispanic community, for the minorities, for the black community. And once you look back to what he actually did, he only made Democrat politicians richer. Mm-hmm. He has the he holds the, the the record for deportations. He holds the most war bombs that he just did. Yeah, I've heard that. Like a bunch of stuff like didn't come <clears throat> on the news. Why? Because the liberals control, Democrats control the mainstream, most of the mainstream media. Yeah. So and same thing, Fox, which is supposed to be conservative, they got rid of the Tucker, the Tucker Carlson for talking too much. Yeah, hey, I keep seeing him all over podcasts. Is that why? Like he's kind of. Oh yeah, he got fired from uh, Fox. Going on podcasts to talk about. Yeah. Like so. What happened. So well, he 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 still respects a, a lot of the employees and stuff, but he understands that corporations control the narrative. Mm-hmm. So he was being too outspoken that they just told him that you gotta go. And I think who, who's the one that said Joe Rogan? That that's the worst thing they could have done because mm-hmm. they they had him in a chain at Fox. But they let him lose, and now he's just killing. Oh yeah, yeah just yeah. talking shit. Yeah. So now the he just interviewed uh, fucking Putin. Putin. <laughs> that was no way. Really? Yeah. They had a podcast. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. He had his own thing. Like yeah. I follow him. Like yeah. Like you should listen to. Like the talker same thing. He gets big into conspiracies. Like yeah, I've he is seen. crazy. He's just. I think he's a little more crazier than Joe Rogan. Which, yeah. if he becomes vice president, it will be yeah. fucking the same. It will be yeah. so fun to see him as vice president. But. Yeah, Tucker talks real stuff. Like he's, like he he doesn't like to get censored. It's just he he's gone more into uh, aliens, into psychedelics, into yeah, different stuff. Some of that. Like a lot of more real stuff. And the government, like how the government is just being controlled, and how a lot of the Republicans are being blackmailed. Mm-hmm. Like what once you see, like Democrats, like I, I forgot how many they have on 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 Senate. They all vote for the same specific thing. There's not even one that goes against it, mm-hmm. and then. They somehow they pull another twenty, thirty Republicans to win stuff. Yeah. And but uh, there, there's conspiracy. They say it's conspiracy, which I'm like most likely that all these big guys have sex parties, all that kind of stuff, yeah. and they got it recorded. Yeah. Uh, and they have they're, they're being blackmailed because of that. Yeah. So that's why the country's so divided. And like we keep sending fucking sixty, well not sixty billion dollars to Ukraine, yeah. when mm-hmm. freaking Hawaii hasn't been fixed Help. up. Yeah. yeah. Our own states. Are struggling more than freaking. Uh, it's all just other. money and greed. I feel like it's, it's being so like, much of politics. I feel like they just make decisions based off of like who's like giving them the most money. You know. Yeah, it's just, or how to launder the money is just. Yeah. If you look, um, I think the car. Well, I forgot what this guy's name. The president of U- Ukraine, like he. Uh, is that, is that, no. Z- Zelensky. Z- yeah, yeah, Zelensky. Yeah, Zelensky. Yeah, he got caught. Like he <laughs> bought. Yeah, he bought two mansions after like after the war started. Like recently, he bought like a mansion in Florida. Uh, they caught his wife by buying jewelry wow. here, here in, the, in the states and shit. And I'm like, bro, like, aren't you supposed to be poor? Aren't you supposed to be protecting your country and shit over yeah. there? But you're, you're spending fucking money. Yeah, it's almost like uh, Biden going to to the beach every fucking other week to fucking. A struggle to carry his damn chairs. So, <laughs> like, that guy's 80, man. <laughs> you see him fall off his bike? Yeah, the fall off his bike. That, 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 that's that's Wait, no one, man. Off his bike. Recently? No, that was like two years back. But this I fool. Think, I, I think it's more did. recent now, like a no, year, the bike like six one, months. Maybe a year. But when he fell off his bike, that was one. Uh, which I'm like, if we had a cognitive president, like a Democrat, maybe like uh, Obama, then cool. But this guy is such a fucking joke. Yeah, it's it's going to be like Biden and Trump again, right? Like they're thinking. <laughs> That's kind of what Trump's it's leading gonna, to, right? I, I feel like Trump's going to win. At this point, the Democrats should have <clears throat> backed up uh, Kennedy. There's been multiple times he fell off his bike. Yeah. <laughs> there was this one, which was like a year ago. This one at the top. <laughs> yeah. But there's another one. It was recent. I swear it was like a few months ago. I no, thought. Just... Maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of when... Uh, that person was drunk and hit the hit secret <laughs> secret service car. But well, then the well, the Clintons. There's the Clint, well, fucking Hillary comes keeps coming now talking shit about Donald Trump how he has 91 indictments. But I'm like, they just mm. keep throwing that number. I'm like, well, none of that has sticked. You yeah. know what I mean? But I'm like, what happened to Clinton? Uh, what, what was his first name? Bill. Bill. Bill Clinton. Yeah. Like after the Einstein uh, list came out. He fucking escaped to fucking Mexico. Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that homeboy is just like, he went, anyway, he's just like, what, what, like. He's in Mexico now, Bill Clinton? I think, I'm not oh, sure if he fuck. came back to the States, yeah. but there's so much evidence tying him to the Iceland. Yeah, I've heard a lot. He's, of, he's on the he's yeah. on the planes and shit. Yeah. And same thing, some uh, some reporters, uh, private reporters tried to confront Hillary and some events 
about the list and stuff and that that guy got dragged the hell out of the fucking yeah. uh, hole and stuff so you heard like, about the p diddy stuff the, i think there's some dirt there because i think i was seeing there's already a movie on netflix really? have you seen saw, a I documentary yeah it was like something something p diddy yeah something about p diddy oh, there's about yeah. that already real quick yeah it's did good. they make it once this came out or do you think they already were making it and then i i think it's, it's a hit timing. for him yeah so so i think uh, like like they were saying i forgot talker was saying there's a lot of i think the government has a lot of like uh every Epstein people mm-hmm. that have a lot of dirt on their own people but p diddy did somebody dirty from like yeah. the politicians that he tried to black, blackmail the wrong person and they went after his ass Mm. Yeah. And they're trying to like. I'm surprised how quick they're trying to discredit. Anytime that you see in social media that they're trying to discredit somebody, it's a hit. Yeah. Same thing with Donald Trump. That they tried to like get anything they could. And P Diddy, I'm like, a month in, they already had a freaking the, co- the commentary. I'm like, oh, they, they, when I saw, I was like, oh, okay, this is a fucking hit. What I've seen is like, I think he was involved in a lot of a lot of like sex trafficking stuff, right? Like, well, was helping yeah, sex, to, like, trafficking, sex trafficking. Like, if you want to move up the the chain on <clears throat> Hollywood. You had to do favors, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And he had so many cameras and stuff around. And same thing when they raided his mansion, they took all the recordings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they're, they're gonna protect certain public figures. Yeah, they'll release some, but they probably will keep some. Yeah, because it, I mean, he was a billionaire. So at at one point, I think I think like one billion. You know, it's crazy that and he made it to the Baham. Is uh, where did he make it? I don't know, he moved. He, it's like a country that's not non extra. Extradited. Extra. Um, <laughs> How do you say it? Also, oh, also, so he, so he escaped. He's over there right now. So he went to a country where like oh, he, he can't, can't get extra, in trouble extradited. now. Yeah, which is crazy because I'm sure his money just like got him there. You know. Yeah. Like, uh, but wow. it's it's interesting because well yeah he's very obviously influential and powerful so I think yeah he probably did do a lot of shady stuff but I mean to your point he probably at one point did it to the wrong person and then yeah. they're you know. They flip on you like that, you know? Yeah. You try to black a guy, black guy and he has more connections than you, and your yeah. damn house got raided. And yeah. now you're in Netflix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and that. it's crazy because there's cool. a video that just came out yesterday of him. Like, there's always rumors that he had beat his ex uh, oh, that wife one. or girlfriend. And it's like crazy that, because that was so long. That was like years ago, I think, when he like they that. were saying that he was like abusing her and stuff. And then it's crazy that, like, just now it comes out. Yeah, like, yeah. It just now happened? came out. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's a video of, like... It's in a hotel. So, it's like, he, what, did he, he pay off the people in the fucking hotel? So, he's, he's like, you could see her. He's, like, kicking her and beating her, right? Yeah, yeah that's all that one. But that was in 2016. So, it's, it is, a, like, it's always just annoying when it's, like, it's like well, how, why now? You yeah. know? Or why not in 2016? Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Like, why aren't Good. they releasing the footage? Because he was being protected. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing is, like, he pissed off the wrong people. Which, I mean good because if he was a bad person that you know but not, not, now i wonder if he has any dirt that he's gonna release from over there on other people huh yeah, yeah. i mean it depends if he could make a deal but it's probably far but too. but even then like when i was I randomly i started seeing some videos of how powerful the united states is military like if somebody wants to go kill him over there yeah he's dead yeah he's he dead <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're probably like but they probably the hell out of here they enjoy can't. your money and shut up shut yeah up. they probably it probably looks shady to kill him so they probably doing something you know well but, well uh, it looks shady how I, einstein well uh, every Epstein, uh, Epstein, <laughs> Epstein, Epstein died yeah that's like, crazy yeah that's and the it's whole like, conspiracy i did that i don't I, know anything I, about that i think it was hillary man i think hillary did that shit <laughs> i mean he was just in the pockets anything. of every big people and, and they said he faked like his way to the top too like jeffrey epstein like are you talking about diddy no i'm talking about Epstein. because i remember i started watching the epstein documentary yeah, I thought it was a movie, and once I realized it was a documentary <laughs> after the first episode, I, was like, Fuck. <laughs> I stopped watching it. But <laughs> apparently, he didn't have like like he lied to get to like a very powerful position. Like he would lie to everybody and say like, "Oh yeah, I went to like Harvard or whatever." Well, that, like, well that's the easy way to say it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like in the the commentary, the commentary is not gonna say, "Oh yeah, the government helped them get it to that uh, level." So the government helped him mm-hmm. to get to that level. I think they're he just some, saying like, "Oh, he was a manipulator and yeah, lied to no. people." Mm. It's easy way to say it, but like Tucker and everybody else says, like this guy had help. Yeah, people. Yeah, know. like he people. had such a bankroll for, yeah. for for him to be in nobody and for him to be able to do all the stuff that he did. He was getting money from somebody. Yeah, to be able to run his whole system, and yeah, the the whole thing of the child trafficking. Did do you guys? Did, I'm not sure if I told you guys. California made child trafficking or child sex or, or child 
that a misdemeanor. Really? Yeah. Instead of what I, was it before? The felony. The felony. Oh, oh shit. shit. It should be a fucking felony. As soon as all that shit that. came out, like, politicians in California, like, drop that shit quick to a fucking misdemeanor. <laughs> I'm not fucking Democrats, man. It was just, you guys are doing some dirty shit. <laughs> it I was gotta just, look into that. But I'm like, like I think I saw somebody walking around asking people, did you know, like, uh, what, like, I think they asked, what should somebody that molested kid get? It's like, well, person alive, you know what I mean? It's like, they should yeah, die same. or something. So and then they asked, do you know California made it misdemeanor? Yeah. Just like a slap in the hand. Yeah. That was fucking insane. So, yeah. you know that it's should corrupt. I think this is, the more everyone's been exposing things, you could see, like, how much people are enjoy children in the wrong way you know and that's <laughs> you know like how just that's just how common it is in the industry of anything nah, like politics yeah. celebrities uh even like a lot of famous youtubers now too like just no nah, that's, that's just, just starting evil, to man. really get out there you know yeah sucks. but uh you want to wrap it up yeah <laughs> it's getting late and I'm you ready tired. to wrap it up <laughs> yeah so any final words no uh, nothing well, camera? Just, just, <laughs> well just want you guys to smell your your cubans oh. Oh, you know what I was thinking? What? You know, last time you were on, we ended the pod by drinking uh, eggs? raw eggs. Yeah. You guys want to drink some eggs? I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought about it. I was like, maybe, maybe the cue is a... Oh, good. this just smells so much better than what we really? had. Really? Jaime thought our other cigars smelled like horse shit. It's really yeah. like horse shit. Like literally horse shit. I think they smelled like this a little bit. Maybe a little more uh, like minty. Could, well, when you're more... <laughs> Fine tuned. Well, well, do you have them still? The I think ones? this smells like more like horse shit than those ones. No, I don't have them anymore. You well, don't have them? I have the big one, the big ass one. Where is it? This is in my room. Oh, uh, you want to get it real quick? Oh, and egg. compare the smells? Yeah, and then can we go get the eggs? Yeah, I got. The, let me see if I have enough yeah, we're eggs. Gonna, we're going to cut it for a second. So okay. Can, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we got the big cigar. Let me smell. Actually, I guess they kind of smell the same. Hmm. Ah, uh, this one's that's a different it's stronger smell. though too. Cause it was like pee a little bit. Does this smell like pee? It smells like gross. Like cat pee, or something. Or your cat probably peed on it. So. No, it's been in my drawer. I think it may have been those that we just grabbed. The that eggs and not. The... <laughs> it smells weird, right? Yeah, it smells weird. This smells like kind of like horse farm shit, kiss, piss, <laughs> and like shit. <laughs> Maybe more. Yeah. All right, big so boy. Gonna... Huh? There's a big boy. Jeez. Look, gonna... we try to cut it. I think. <laughs> My my cutter won't even cut that. Jeez. You don't think so? No. <laughs> Still gets it His cutter. <laughs> <clears throat> no. The little guillotine. The little guillotine? No, man. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Been there before. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. There you go. Let's put it out of the way. Yeah. Or All right. All right. Well, we're going to try some eggs, eh? We're going to end the pot with a little tradition, I guess. Give me my eggs right oh, now. that's all. Do you swirl it up like oh just for the yeah. tapatio in there? Chris. Jeez. You want salt? <laughs> tapatio? Uh, yeah, I'll have a little, a little salt. salt. Just a little bit. Thank you. Watch my sodium in too. Uh-huh. Do you still do this? Like Uh well I hadn't done it. I just brought ten dozens of eggs. I think it's ten dozen. Damn. From Costco today. It's uh, hundred and twenty. Yeah, I need to start That's uh, good. Thank you. Doing that again. Fuck. Cause yeah, scrambled eggs. I got tired of scrambled eggs. Can't do so this. You get tired of eggs. Yeah, eggs get so boring after a while. Well, when you when you do it like this, it's like they then go. you start making chilaquiles and you know chilaquiles. Like, yeah. Make it fun. All right. All right. <coughs> Fuck. Cheers to uh, maybe next year we'll have you on and we'll see yeah. what what's changed then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hope they open my office. Let's go. Oh yeah. Three, two, one. I thought I was going to throw up for a second. Oh. oh, It's almost like spit. I, I, spit. I forgot for a second how to swallow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you stuck, you get like, all oh, the... Oh, wait. I, I got to swallow. I got to swallow. You get all the clear stuff, and then the yolk is like... Hey. <laughs> like it's so much. No homo, but I just did like both those yolks in one At little... At the same time? One little... And then Damn. I was like, what the hell? I didn't expect that. Like, oh, I, my God. Well, it, I almost want to gag for a second. Like, wasn't that something like four? It was a lot. I think, it, it, more? I think it was three or four last time. It was oh, not two. Really? They kept but, cracking them. Yeah, but that's how you do it. You just like open up the throat and then you just let them slide. Okay. Well, we're going <laughs> to you know, end that there. <laughs> hey, that, that's more PG-13 than... <laughs> the movie yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this third... Uh, get more over here, yeah. <laughs> this third... Um, sorry. Second. Second. 
<coughs> second uh, time we've had coach. I know you guys didn't get to see the first, but fuck it. Just know it was good. And, uh, you know, guess the rest are off. Uh, thanks again for yeah. willing to be on. I mean, you were gonna, you pushed it to be like, oh, you know, I want to come on and talk about tell my it. story. And I, tell I was getting close to like, I'm like, should I? Should I not? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just going to do it. You know what I mean? Just, I got nothing to lose. It's just yeah. Yeah. can't lose your about, job. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't lose my job. You know what I, mean? <laughs> like, I got my own business. But <laughs> it just pretty much explained the both perspectives. If anybody just heard some negative stuff on one side, at least they now they exactly see my side so mm-hmm. but love love to those that supported me <clears throat> yeah. and those that didn't hopefully you change your style yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. no hard feelings no hard yeah. feelings god takes care of everything not me <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything thanks for coming on yeah thank you guys That's it. yeah appreciate you coach all right until <clears throat> next time Yeet. see you guys everyone peace peace Nice. Good one. Dude, that was long. Holy hell.